Welcome back to the huddle. 90 minutes away from kick right here on our air at Heinz Field. The Wolfpack looking to bounce back from last week. They have won the last two versus Pitt. Looking for a third. As for those Panthers and that defense, they too arrived to Heinz Field. And that defense is coming. Fourth straight home game for the Panthers. 4-0 they're looking to go for the first time since 2000. 90 minutes away from kick. Welcome back into the huddle. NC State at Pitt. Noon kick right here on our air. The Wolfpack looking to get right and maybe get their third consecutive win over Pitt. It's going to be a tall task. To talk more about it, the guy on the sidelines, the toughest man on the sidelines, out of anybody on that field, he'll be there with West Durham and Roddy Jones on the call at noon. And Eric, let's talk about NC State and more specifically the quarterback position. Bailey Hockman got the start last week for the pack, but he was pulled for Devin Leary. So who today gets the start for NC State? We have not been given that information yet. If, if I'm guessing, I'm guessing Devin Leary. He was the starter coming into the season. He lost his job simply because he was out with COVID. When he came back, he wasn't in great shape. He just wasn't sharp, according to head coach Dave Dorn. And then last week when he came in, he throws for 75% completion rate and was able to make some plays. I would expect Devin Leary to be the starter, but Dave Dorn does not have to announce that. And so he's going to use that as a competitive advantage today. He, the Pac's defense, struggled mightily last week versus Virginia Tech. How do they shore up that defense for a better effort today? The Pack is very excited to get back. Tanner Engel and Peyton Wilson, they're two leading tacklers from a year ago. Both those guys missed the game last week, and that led to 314 rushing yards for the Hokies. And so they think that this week that will give them a big boost in the game. He would. We know what Pitt's defense is, but we don't quite know what their offense is yet. With these Panthers, what adjustments and strides do they take? Right now, they're trying to make plays down the field, and they want to establish the run game. This pit run game has not been what it had been in the past. Now, with Mark Whipple, their offensive coordinator, they're going to throw it more than maybe the traditional pit team you think about, but they're not running it for a great yards per carry, 3.5, I believe, on the season, right around there, and that's not up to their center. Pitt has a great center in Jimmy Morrissey, a great left tackle in Carter Warren, and they're going to look to run behind those guys today and see if they can establish the run similar to what Virginia Tech did a week ago against the Pack. The Wolf Pack double-digit dogs today. What is the key for NC State to stay in this game? NC State's going to have to make some plays down the field on first and second down on the running situations. Pitt plays with their safeties about six to eight yards off the ball. They need to make some plays to open that up, and they also can't get in third and long, second and long situations because when Pitt can put their ears back and rush the passer, there might not be anybody in the country as good as this defensive line. He would. You look great as always, but be honest with me, man. When you're that close to those guys on the field, how bad do you want to throw on the pads to get right back down to business? I'll tell you what, I'm going to feel a whole lot better tomorrow morning than I did when I was playing. But, man, and EJ will tell you, any of those guys will tell you, Emac, when you get away from the game, you always miss it. But I, I'm enjoying this side of it, too, and I'm going to wake up feeling pretty dang good tomorrow morning. Well, we'll keep you with us, my friend. Eric Wood, always great stuff per usual. Have a great call with Roddy and Wes. Thanks, Jordan. We're just 30 minutes away from kickoff NC State and Pitt. And we're going to head to the field there at Heinz Field. And there's a look at Dave Doran, Coach. Yeah, Coach Doran has done a great job. He's always had a, he's always had defense. You know, he's had some great players doing the draft and up front for years. And now, all of a sudden, they're struggling on that side of the ball. And today is going to be the ultimate test, playing one of the better offenses and defenses in the league in Pitt. So uh, good luck to you, Coach Doran, today. EJ, a look at Pat Narduzzi coming here as well. The opposition. JC, I'm a huge fan of Coach Narduzzi. I love the way he's able to get his team to play hard. And I can only imagine how it is in that locker room with this guy. He is a defensive-minded coach. He loves up on his offense. Obviously, he loves his quarterback, Kenny Pickett. Uh, but I think these guys are going to play great today. They understand that, hey, they're off to a great start and they cannot let down versus an NC State team that wants some success early on. Look out this guy. He's slowly starting to get a lot more respect. Big quarterback, Kenny Pickett, Emac. Come on, Kenny. I think this is the day, man, where you've got to really step up. I want to see 300-plus yards through the air, multiple touchdowns, and just command of this offense. Again, this is a struggling North Carolina State defense that if you're going to do it to anybody it, so far on your schedule, this will be the chance. So excited to see that offense. Can't wait to see him at noon.
Welcome back into the huddle. 20 minutes away from kick, NC State pit on our air. Coach Drake Thomas. Yeah, Drake Thomas leading the team in tackles right now. He's a sophomore. He played a good little bit as a freshman a year ago. He's a tough nut. And I'm uh, really excited to see uh, him lay the wood to some people today. Patrick Jones, the second, the senior, is looking good early in the season, guys. We all saw Jalen Twyman was out, but I think this guy stepped up. He already has three and a half sacks in the season, 14 total tackles. This dude is a playmaker, hailing from the 757. I think, honestly, he's going to be a first or a second round pick in this uh, NFL draft coming up. This dude is a baller. Look for him to get a bunch of sacks today. Yeah, no doubt about it, EJ. He is a freak of nature on that defensive line. Let's do a little bit of offense, can we? How about <laughs> Bam Knight? This guy is just fantastic. Almost eight yards per carry. Give him the rock and he's going to do great things. Scored a touchdown. He, he's just a fantastic running back, truly, guys. He can do it all in the passing game, in the running game. Just a really special player that I expect NC State to try to get it going. Of course, he's going to be going against some werewolves and some other scary monsters on that defensive line of pit. Uh, but look for him to have a big <laughs> impact if NC State can get it going today offensively. You know, uh, a year ago, Pitt had Maurice French, and French must have caught 5,000 balls you know, in that system there with Coach Whipple. And all of a sudden, like, who's going to be the next guy? Well, here he is, Jordan Addison, a freshman. He's already got 21 catches, 169 yards, two touchdowns. He is a go-to guy for Kenny Pickett, which is somebody he needed to uh, rely on. He's got some other good players at the receiving position, but Jordan showed up just in time to help them really become a dynamic offensive passing team. Paris Ford, the hometown hero, hailing from Pittsburgh right there at home. This guy's a junior. He is a heavy hitter. Anything that's coming across the middle, Paris Ford is going to have something to say about it. He's either going to tattoo the, uh, tattoo the receiver with his shoulder or he's going to come down with an interception. He already has two picks, and I think last year he had three. So let's uh, be alert for this guy. Whatever quarterback plays for NC State, be aware of Paris Ford. You do not want to hang up a post or a goal ball because he's going to tattoo your receiver or he's going to knock it down or come down <laughs> with a pick. This dude is another baller. I'm excited to see him play today. Yeah, e, man, that's one of my favorite players in the ACC, hard hitter. But how about one of his dogs up front, Rashad Weaver? This guy has just been instant impact. Obviously, he was hurt out all last season. Uh, but just he, he does it all. He tackles for loss. He's making big plays. He's getting sacks. You see their second in the ACC with five and a half tackles for loss. It's fantastic to see him back. Uh, and again, you've got to be excited, especially not having Twyman. Uh, this is a guy that a lot of people just forgot about. Uh, and he is stepping up and, and really delivering on that defensive line. Shout out to the ACC Network DJ right there, scratching the record, regrouping the music as we showed every player on the field right there. As for Pitt's defense, it's smothered its opponents so far this year, holding them to just 177 yards per game. 17 sacks, those are the best in the ACC and the nation. NC State's offense may not be up to the challenge. Here is Coach Pat Narduzzi of the Panthers getting his team juice last night. Tomorrow we want to play with an attitude, okay? Attitude, okay? We should be playing angry tomorrow, okay? It should be an angry football team, okay? That's the attitude when we go in tomorrow. You can be a nice guy off the field, tomorrow we're angry, okay? Tough football team, okay? Tomorrow, tough, okay? They think they're gonna come in and be tougher than you guys, I'm just telling you. You know, I read some stuff this week that they think they're tough and you know, we're playing, you know, we're in a regular game, okay? Tomorrow, Pittsburgh, okay, is the toughest football team, there's no question about it. Yeah, we love us some Pitt Panthers here at the network. We don't even hide it. Every week it, it gets more and more about not underappreciated. <laughs> we truly appreciate them now. And, and Emac, we love this defense. We talk a lot about Pitt's defense. But has that offense found its footing yet? Man, you just threw the perfect alley-oop. I'm going to go get it and slam this thing down better than your uh, weak attempt. That was pretty embarrassing. <laughs> but this offense has to keep going. They, if there's a game – that they're going to be explosive, it's going to be this game. This, you know, NC State defense has given up a ton of yards, a ton of points per game, and Coach alluded to it earlier. That's not what they're used to doing, but it might just be who they are this year. So if Pitt is going to be explosive, if we're going to see progress 
from them on offense. This is going to be the game uh, where we, we find that out, or we're just going to find out that they're an okay offense that can score and move the ball, but they really rely on that elite defense. EJ, you know, I don't know what you're going to see from the quarterback play, uh, but I expect Kenny Pickett to do better. I agree. I think Kenny's going to have a great game. Uh, you know, this guy, he's been there forever. Uh, he's kind of seen everything. He's been up. He's been down <laughs> uh, coming into this game. They understand the implications at NC State because this is a team that, that can play well. We saw versus uh, Wake Forest. Uh, they had a, a high-scoring game where the uh, NC State defense was able to create turnovers. Obviously, we know the Pitt defense can get out their quarterback. If NC State's O-line can hold up and give whichever quarterback is going to play a chance to look down the field, they have some playmakers. And Maki Mizi, one of their top receivers, does a great job. Uh, he's been doing a great job this season. And also, uh, Ricky Person Jr., another running back. We haven't talked about him. Uh, you, you saw on the tape earlier that this guy can make some plays, too. So, Coach, what do you think about this matchup coming up? Well, you guys have hit the nail on the head on really what this game's going to be about. The thing that I'm interested in uh, going forward, though, is the schedule that Pitt's got. Uh, ESPN says the toughest schedule, remaining schedule in the United States of America. Wow. So, you know, today's the wow. day to get some more, gain some more ground on those uh, victories and getting better at what you do because going down the road, it's going to get even tougher. And uh, so I, I love the fact that Pitt – has come out, and Coach Narduzzi, you know, he's got the fiery speeches, but this guy believes in his team. He's done it from the beginning. Uh, I was lagging behind, but uh, I'm starting to become a believer and uh, just really excited about what Pitt could do. EJ, knowing that Pitt is going to get after the quarterback, a, a nation's best, FBS best, 17 sacks, you know they're coming at you. So what does NC State do offensively with their scheme, knowing the heat is going to be 24-7 this afternoon? Normally, Jordan, when you have a really good rush in, you try to chip with a tight end or a running back uh, to slow him down just a little bit. But look, it, uh, what Pitt has too, they have Rashad Weaver, they have uh, 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 the, the other Patrick guys. Jones. Uh, so, I mean, they have a bunch of guys. Thank you. They have Patrick Jones, the second, who I just spoke about. Excuse me, guys. But uh, <laughs> they have a bunch of people that can get after the quarterback. And even if it's not the D line, the linebackers can get there too. So they have such a mix in their scheme defensively to get after the quarterback. That's the hard thing about Pitt. Even if you try to stop those DNs, they'll still send some blitzes at you that make a way to the QB. And NC State has a pretty competent offensive line, a pretty good offensive line, actually, but this is going to be a challenge. They're going to have to chip, leave guys in, slide the protection, uh, or even roll out the quarterback a little bit because that's just what Pitt does. It's not even a pride thing where you say, we can do it five on five, we got these guys. You're just putting yourself at a disadvantage. So really look forward to seeing what NC State is going to do, whether it's keeping a tight end in, chipping with your running backs, or just simply rolling your quarterback away from pressure. But, J.C., there's no doubt that they have to do something or Pitt's just going to get after them all game long. Be interesting to see how this one plays out. We're under 15 minutes away from kickoff there at Heinz Field. NC State heading up against a very tough Panthers team, undefeated, and they're swag surfing, looking to go 4-0 for the first time since 2000. I'm going with the Pitt Panthers. I think that defense is too tough. They're going to cause a bunch of turnovers. They're going to get in the backfield a ton and really look forward to seeing the offense and can they be explosive, take another step forward. I'm going Pitt. Like I said, I'm on the Pitt bandwagon. I'm staying on it till they lose again. Pitt. Hail Pitt. Hail to Pitt, guys. I'm going with Pitt in this one. I think NC State's going to struggle. Pitt has another home game, which is pretty cool. So Pitt's going to win again. All right, <laughs> NC State, I hope you heard it. The best three-man weave in the business. Wes, Roddy, Ewood, take it away. The stage is yours. NC State and Pitt right now. Saturday high noon, and we're where the three rivers meet in Pittsburgh on the North Shore at Heinz Field. The number 24 Panthers trying to go to 4-0, and NC State visits next. Pat Narduzzi's team takes the field, the fourth of four straight home games to open the 2020 campaign, and NC State has back-to-back -back ranked opponents on the road for the first time since 2016 as the Wolfpack enters Heinz Field. With Roddy Jones, Wes Durham, our field analyst today is Eric Wood, and we welcome you to Heinz Field. Going to be an interesting ball game. We've got the Pitt defense, which has been incredibly impressive through the first three, three weeks, and the last two wins over Syracuse and Louisville. Meanwhile, for the Wolfpack, the story is the timeline of the quarterback. 
Of course, Bailey Hockman started a couple weeks ago, but you got to remember, Dave Dorn for five years had two guys, Ryan Finley and Jacoby Brissett, quarterback 61 ball games. But Roddy, a year ago, they went with Matthew McKay at the front end of the season, and then ultimately, Bailey Hockman and Devin Leary helped close out 2019. And Hockman again got the call to start a couple of weeks ago against Wake Forest. Well, they thought the guy was going to be Devin Leary coming into the year, but due to the fact that he had to isolate himself, quarantine for much of camp, missed so much that he wasn't able to get going. But we finally saw him last week, and he was fantastic in mop-up time against Virginia Tech. You saw the arm strength. You saw the command of the offense that he had been so rusty with after having to isolate. He's got better than advertised mobility, and while Dave Doran has not yet named a starter for this game, I'd expect it to be Devin Leary, and this is going to be by far the biggest test of his career. This pit defense has been incredible. Getting after the quarterback, 17 sacks so far this season. Not only that, Wes, another 17. They've only allowed 17% on third downs as well. The defensive line gets a lot of the pub, but those two, those linebackers are fantastic. And then the defensive backs, Harris Ford right there, Damar Hamlin, and the entire crew have been fantastic, and they get the turnover dunks over and over, Wes. Well, Jason Pennock told me earlier this week they call it Blitzburg. So while the guys at the back end get to dunk it, Eric Wood, the front line's providing all the power. Pitt's defensive line is not only physically gifted, they're also extremely intelligent for a college defensive line. They understand pass rush lanes so well in getting after the quarterback. And as we see this first clip, Patrick Jones is going to come under the left tackle for Louisville, and Rashad Weaver will go over the top, trapping Malik Cunningham in the pocket for a sack on third and 16 on the second clip. Patrick Jones is going to make a spin move under the right tackle of Louisville. Keyshawn Camp understanding that Malik Cunningham is a right-handed quarterback. He's going to scramble to his right, traps him in the pocket by looping him around for another sack by the Pete D line. All right, Eric, NC State won the toss, elected to defer, so we get a look at Trenton Gill, who will kick it away, and Jordan Addison is deep to receive for the Panthers. NC State trying to snap a five-game ACC road losing streak that was extended last Saturday night in the 45-24 loss at number 20, Virginia Tech. Here is Gill to the football. Addison will watch it travel into the end zone, and the Panthers will start first and 10 off their 25-yard line. The 31st career start today for senior Kenny Pickett, who, by the way, has had seven career games of 300 yards or more, and last week threw for 220 and two scores, right? Yeah, I would say he was fairly efficient last week. Mark Whipple pointed out the fact that they need to finish better in the red zone, threw an interception in the red zone, did Kenny Pickett on a play that was a little off, but ultimately he has operated this offense at a high level this season. Vincent Davis is the running back with Pickett, who has a tight end and three receivers. And Davis will get the football here on first down, and NC State rallies quickly, and that is Drake Thomas. The sophomore linebacker from Heritage High School just outside of Raleigh at Wake Forest, North Carolina with the stop. Second in the full 10. Pickett going to take the shot. Addison wide open. Busted coverage for the Wolfpack in the secondary. And 75 yards later, Jordan Addison's in the end zone. West. This is certainly not going to go down as the toughest touchdown for Jordan Addison, but what a start to the season the young man has had. And ultimately, NC State just blows the coverage. Pitt goes with tempo, catches NC State off guard. I don't know who was supposed to cover Jordan Addison, but certainly wasn't supposed to be that much space. And that's what tempo does early in the game. Looked like NC State late getting a call in. Pitt strikes early. Two plays, 75 yards, and a half minute. Alex Kessman to try and add the point after. And the kick is good. And in just two snaps, Kenny Pickett throws another touchdown pass, his sixth of the year. And Jordan Addison's early rookie year continues to flash. He certainly does. And all he did here was run straight. You see in the background, Isaiah Moore, the middle linebackers are closest to him. I don't know if it was a misalignment, certainly a, a blown coverage. But NC State was scrambling early, or right as that ball was snapped, scrambling to get lined up. So not everybody on the same page. 
good job for Kenny Pickett of just finding the guy. Dave Dorn said Monday, we didn't adjust to the adversity very well last Saturday night in Blacksburg. Wolfpack finds themselves right back in that spot again after just two snaps. Yeah, they're going to have to adjust now against a Pittsburgh defense, Wes. You and I were talking before the game. If I'm Pat Narduzzi, once you get a touchdown or two lead, you let that defense go to work. So NC State's going to have its work cut out for them. All right. So the Wolfpack has Ricky Person deep, and he will let that go through the end zone. So now the question is answered in the person of Devin Leary. So the redshirt sophomore, Sicklerville, New Jersey, who was 12 of 16 last week, as Roddy told you, for 165 yards, gets the start. And I think physically he gives you the best chance to push the ball down the field. The, the ball explodes out of his hand. Tim Beck said that he's going to continue with the quarterback run game that they use from time to time. But Devin Leary being the guy is a good sign for NC State. Ricky Person opens as the running back. And the first down carry will be for Person. He got 5, 10, make it 11 yards to the 36 for Ricky Person. And Rashad Weaver's involved in the tackle. So is DeMar Hamlin. And we've got an injured Panther on the play coming here to the near side. Wes, I can see that from up here. And Paris Ford. Fullback Dylan Parham threw a mean block on Paris Ford at the line of scrimmage, and Paris Ford was instantly shaken up. All right. Paris Ford, one of the best safeties in the entire country. So he's going to be replaced by number nine, Brandon Hill, at that, that boundary safety spot. He's going to be asked to fill in the run game. We'll keep an eye on him to see if he can return. Just the eighth career game, by the way, for Hill, who played to the limit last year, Roddy, so he could preserve the red shirt. In motion, that's a Mac on Messi for the Wolfpack. They're going to run Person again. Ricky Person's got four there to the 40. So it'll be second down and six. How about the, the physicality of this NC State front? Dylan Parham, the fullback, had Patrick Jones on his back after that play. And we got an early jump, I think, Rashad Weaver. Here on the near side at the defensive end spot for the Panthers. Stuart Mullins is the referee today as assigned by the Atlantic Coast Conference. Offside, number 17, defense, entering the neutral zone, causing an offensive player to react. Five-yard penalty, second down. Early in the game, that's a great use of the hard count. This pit defensive line is teed up with their ears back. They're always rushing the passer. For them, for NC State, great use of the hard count, get them offsides early. Here's the throw, Leary, and he's going to overshoot a Mezzi. Marquez Williams and, uh, or beg your pardon, Jason Pennock. And uh, Brandon Hill in the coverage there as you see Paris Ford going to the tent behind the Pittsburgh bench. And it was a, a massive block, as Eric said, happened on Paris Ford. They take the helmet, take him into the tent to be evaluated. It's a big loss for this Pitt defense. Yeah, Paris Ford's 26th career game. Five career interceptions. And kind of the emotional guy for this defense out of that secondary. Watch forward to the top of your screen. Oh, wow. My coach used to call that big fish, big fish eat little fish right there. And you like the physicality of Paris Ford. Yeah. But it's obviously got him pretty shaken up. Parham, by the way, 246 pounds, fifth-year senior from Raleigh. The clock continued to run after the incomplete pass. Please set the clock to 13.50. 13.50 and start it on the snap. So third and short it will be here for the Wolfpack, who on the year is 38%, 10th in the ACC. They were 5 of 16 last week against Virginia Tech. Here's Person trying to scoot to the outside. Now reroutes and will get the first down toward the 48-yard line. Now Devin Leary's missed his only throw, Roddy, but Ricky Person's given the Wolfpack a nice base to work from, at least on the ground here early. Well, I, I like the fact that NC State has come out and said, we're going to run the ball. Teams have not had a lot of success running the ball against Pitt this year, but we're going to be physical up front, run the football, and establish it early. Their best success has come in the run game, as you said. Person stays in the backfield, fresh set of downs for Leary. 
Thayer Thomas in motion. He'll get the ball here on perimeter in that slot area, and he'll crash over the midfield line to the 48 of Pittsburgh. Another pretty nice game for NC State on first down. They've been able to really stay ahead of the chains. And that's going to allow them to take some shots down the field. You saw the shot earlier to Emeka Amezi. They're going to have to do that. Pitt plays tight man coverage, especially on early downs. They're going to have to do that at times during this game. Amezi in motion again. Straight ahead, this is Zonovan Knight. Better known as Bam to everybody. Sophomore from Bailey, North Carolina, who had 94 yards last week in the loss at Blacksburg with his first carry. He actually had, that's his 26th carry. And Keyshawn Camp is being tended to here on the Pittsburgh sideline as well. So some early injury type situations staring Pittsburgh's defensive unit. Camp on the table and Paris Ford, I think, still in the tent here behind Coach Narduzzi. Leary tonight in the flat and finally tackled at the Pittsburgh 35 yard line. Tim Beck is giving Randy Bates a handful to think about here in this first possession for NC State. Tim Beck expected man to man coverage on that and he got it. They ran a little mesh concept with two receivers and that also helped pick the linebacker that was supposed to cover Bam Knight. He's able to slip out into the flat for a nice third down completion. I have really liked the way Tim Beck has come out and called this game so far. There's Thomas again in the orbit pattern, and he'll get it out in the flat. And now going to throw it down the field and almost intercepted by Marquez Williams. On a ball intended for a Mezzi. Or Devin Carter. It was Devin Carter, 88, not 86, a Mezzi. Well, Thayer Thomas threw the jump ball. He probably should have just eaten this one or thrown it out of bounds. But he's counting on his receiver to make a play. Thayer Thomas, a baseball player as well, so that is in the scouting report, no doubt, for Pitt. There's Tim Beck, offensive coordinator, quarterback's coach for the Wolfpack. Second in the full 10 for Leary, and here comes Pittsburgh with the pressure, dumps it to Knight in the flat, and he'll be taken down. Devin Danielson, big 300-pound redshirt sophomore, moves well for Narduzzi's front. He got out of the space, and... Able to get over there near the sideline to make the play on night. 55, offense, 10-yard penalty, second down. Tyrone Riley, the left tackle, tagged with that one, Roddy. Yeah, he was. It was actually a really nice call for NC State against a blitz from Pitt. It was a better play by Danielson to get out there that is obviously negated with the block in the back. C55 leading, just gets... Jason Pennock on the back. It's a pretty nifty play by Pennock turning his back. It's a pretty nifty play by the uh, by the senior defensive. Did you have a good call for blocking the back? I did not, but uh, but I would have been the senior that that would have done the move that Pennock just did. You know, those are those Jedi moves. Never got call for blocking the back. Here's Leary, long throw, looking for Thomas, and broken up on the play by Demar Hamlin. And a flag has gone down here. This might be pass interference on the Panthers. Paris Ford back on the field will litigate. <laughs> Paris Ford fr fresh out of the tent already. Yeah, uh, fresh out of the tent and into litigation with the officiating crew. It's pass interference on Hamlin, I think. Pass interference, number three defense, 15-yard penalty, and an automatic. First down. Guys, for someone who has been called for a block in the back on a screen similar, I don't like that call at all on Tyrone Riley. At the last second, the DB can't turn his back to get a flag drawn there. I don't like that call at all, but I loved the screen call by Tim Beck yeah. to get them back into what would have been a third and manageable. Well, now the penalty gets him the first down. Yeah, and that was a, that was a good call on the pass interference. That's a messy in motion. Look at Leary, play fake, now shoots it inside. And the catch is made, and that's Dylan Parham, the fullback. That was a nifty little play call there. He, he faked the screen to one side. Ricky Person goes to the opposite side, the same side as Parham, and they end up throwing it ahead. Right. So it was kind of like he had three screen options on that one, a lot to sort out for Pitt. See Person in the backfield again, and that time they got that Cansey sticking his head in the line. Yeah. Also talking to Iki Ikwanu at the same time. 
Ikiak Wanu gave him a little slap on the head when he jumped across the line. Sure did. Offside. Offside. Number eight. Number eight. Defense. Defense. Five-yard penalty. Five penalty results in a first down. We spent a lot of time when you talk about Pittsburgh and Jordan Addison's start to his college career. Well, the redshirt freshman, Kalijah Canty, is off to an outstanding start in 2020. He, he certainly is. He's going to make his presence felt during this one. But this bit defensive line just a little on edge early in the game, drying off a couple of times. Three receivers, Angeline the tight end. Here's Leary, shoots it inside off the hands of Thayer Thomas incomplete with Ford covering. Thomas is the guy, Roddy and Eric, who looks like he's a he's the energy you've got to account for in the offense. Yeah. They line him up a lot of it. We've already seen him in orbit, what, two or three times, catch a ball in the flat, he'll run the go. Looks like he's the guy that kind of keys a little bit of what they're going to do. Yeah, he, he, he operates that slot area you see him to the top of the screen third man from the top and he is he's a tough cover in there in the slot that pass from Leary just a little behind him second in the full 10. Leary going to show you the mobility now back to the near side inside the five did he get in before it got knocked out there's a flag down he's measured out at the three and it's going to be a hold on NC State holding number eight Offense, 10 yard penalty, second down. You spoke about mobility at the top. Yeah, and the mobility is not going to be at the top of the scouting report for Devin Leary, but he is a better than expected runner as you see Ricky Person leading out front. And I, I did get called for some of those in my day. Was. You go down for the cut, you're not quite getting them, you wrap the, you wrap you the arm around. Yeah. It's not more of a hold as it is a hug. I'm with it? E. Wood. I don't like that call, Wes. It was a cut block. He wasn't getting off of that anyway. I don't that, like that. That's why they teach you to cut and roll, because that takes away the allure of grabbing the leg when you don't get him down. But you're simply just taught to cut, as Ricky Person did right there, so you get in the way and you avoid the holding call. You can't wrap up his leg. That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a mental error for me right. from number eight, Ricky Carson. Right, got to sweep the leg. He would. A lot of cheat codes leg. being handed out here early in this ball game by you guys. Here is second down. You see the penalty measured from the spot of the infraction, so back to make it second and six. And here is Person trying to squeeze again along this left side. Pennock was there. Ford was there. As was Phil Campbell, by the way, the fifth-year senior at linebacker, number 24. Campbell, by the way, half dozen tackles, but he and Chase Pine and Cam Bright kind of holding things together in that linebacking group. They certainly do. They are an active bunch that plays well off this defensive line. This has been a great drive for NC State. Sure has. If they get anything less than a touchdown, it's going to be disappointing. And they're on third and short. It's now first and goal on the plunge by Devin Leary. And it's quite an answer to a two-snap, 75-yard, blown cover, haymaker from Kenny Pickett to Jordan Addison that got us started. Yeah, it, it, it certainly is. You put that group on the sideline, you let your defense go talk about what happened so they can get on the same page, maybe talk about how they're going to communicate with tempo. But ultimately, after last week, this team was really stymied by this Virginia Tech defense, so it's a good response. First and goal for Leary and the Wolfpack. Shoots it to the end zone and beyond the reach of Thayer Thomas, and another flag has come out. And we've got an official shaking up here underneath the goal post. Stuart Mullins, the referee, making sure everybody's all right. And there is no flag, I guess. They picked it up. Second down. NC State, eight touchdowns, nine offensive possessions in the red zone, and there's a run by Person that's turned away. You see Campbell, the linebacker, at the front of the tackle. NC State generally has avoided, on this drive, avoided the third and long. This one is going to be about seven yards to the end zone. Right. But honestly, if you're able to get down to the two or three yard line, I think you think about going for it if you're NC State. They're going to go empty. This is where the mobility of Devin Leary may come in to play. 
We'll figure it out. It's good to quarterback draw. Sorry, Wes. Three for three on third down is NC State. Leary to the end zone. Caught. Touchdown. Kerry Angela in the tight end. Second touchdown catch of the year for Angeline. And the Wolfpack answers Pitt's opening score. Tim Beck talked to us about mismatches. This time you get Paris Ford on Kerry Angeline down near the end zone. And Angeline just able to beat Ford off the line of scrimmage. Runs a little seam round. It's an easy pitch and catch. Really fantastic drive. Fantastic response from this NC State offense. So on third and goal off the eight, NC State hits four third down tries in the possession and the point after by Christopher Dunn ties the game at seven. So Devin Leary ties the ball game at Pittsburgh. Pretty good statement by Dave Doran's Wolfpack. They tie the ball game at seven. A tidy little 16 play, 69 yard drive at 621, Roddy, that features four third down conversions. And also helped by three Pittsburgh penalties, of which two of them gave State first downs. Yeah, they, they took some shots downfield, got some pass interference calls, certainly helped them. Kicked away by Gill. Addison, there'll be no return, and Kenny Pickett and the Panthers back out on the field. So 16 plays by the Wolfpack, and you know what, Roddy? We said at the start, Dave Dorn's team would have to answer a little bit of the adversity they didn't handle very well last week. Handled it pretty well today. He certainly did, and the offensive line is the one that, that really got that going in the run game. And now it's up to Kenny Pickett in this offense. They were explosive due to a blown coverage yep. by NC State. Now they've got to go back and have a response of their own. Each team's got a change in their offensive line, by the way. Gabe Hoy still out for the Panthers. Carson Van Lynn draws the start at the right tackle spot for Pittsburgh. Again, the Panthers from their 25, and Vincent Davis is the running back with Pickett. He'll get the call on first down. Tries to slide to the right. Gets a couple of yards to the 27. I bring up the offensive line part. Justin Witt is not with this team at NC State on the trip up here. Bryson Spees, who started a half dozen ball games last year, has drawn the go at right tackle today for the Wolfpack. Here's Pickett up in the pocket, and he'll keep it and slide down shy of the first down. They'll measure him to the 34. So it'll be third and a yard for Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh went with tempo again. NC State doing a much better job of communicating and getting lined up. And for Pitt, you've got Jordan Addison in the slot to the top, Taysier Mack to the bottom. Here's Davis again, and he will just get the first down to the 35. The hit made by Peyton Wilson. They're glad to see number 11 in the red hat back on the field for NC State today. NC State struggled last week so mightily on defense, giving up 400, excuse me, 314 yards of rushing to NC State. A lot of that is because Peyton Wilson and Tanner Engel were out. Here's Mack on cue from Roddy, and it is incomplete. By the way, Kenny Pickett coming in was completing 66% of his throws, but had been victimized by about a dozen drops. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Pat, Pat Narduzzi, though, said that he wasn't particularly worried about right. it. As long as they win, not particularly worried about it. But uh, that is something that has bitten this Pittsburgh team for a couple years now. Yep. Here's Pickett, a little RPO, and he keeps it. And he will crash to the 44. And another third and short coming up for Pittsburgh. You know, with so much of the modern quarterback is mobility. I mean, think about the guys that have been at the top of the draft the last few years. Yep. Even Joe Burrow last year, not known as a runner, but great mobility. Kenny Pickett certainly has that and fits that mold. Yep. Third and short. Davis this time on the left side. NC State stacks it up beautifully. The Wolfpack, Terrell Dawkins wearing the zero in that defensive line. He got in there. Isaiah Moore was in the mix. Pat Narduzzi's thinking about it, but watch a lean McNeil there in the middle against Jimmy Morris. He penetrates into the backfield. You yep. see Terrell Dawkins there as well. That was basically all a lean McNeil. It's a good matchup today. Here is Kirk Cristadulo, the Aussie, to punt it away to Thayer Thomas, who had one return last week in Blacksburg for 21 yards. Cristadulo, by the way, is seventh in the ACC and average at 
Just better than 43 yards and timeout is taken by Pittsburgh. Pitt. So Andre Powell who Good handles the special half. teams for Pittsburgh. He and Coach Narduzzi talk it over. We go to break. Seven all ball game at Heinz Field. Well, NC State ties the ball game after the uh, early haymaker from Pittsburgh. It's seven all, and then Wolfpack picks up a big third down conversion, Eric, and now Pitt's going to punt it back to him, and Tim Beck's already looking at his play chart. Absolutely, and when you looked at this game on the front end, everyone was talking about Pitt's defense. What does Tim Beck come out with? He was so multiple. He used hard counts. He ran the football. He used a trick play. He threw out screens, and on third and goal, he gets to an empty set and uses his six foot seven tight end against six foot tall Paris Ford and exploits that matchup as well. Thayer Thomas will wait on the punt from Chris Tadulo out of the Pat Narduzzi timeout. And that ball checks up inside the 20 and out of bounds over toward the NC State bench in front of the offensive coordinator. Wolfpack's got to feel pretty good with Devin Leary at the wheel. Five of his first eight for 26 yards. The touchdown to Angeline. They also ran the ball for 44 yards. Ricky Person, 26 yards on five carries, Roddy, in that opening drive. And Devin Leary wasn't as sharp as he could be as well. Missed a couple of throws on Thayer Thomas. So uh, there is an opportunity for this NC State offense to improve even from what we saw game one, from drive one. The thing that I was impressed with was his offensive line, though, earlier. Yep. And we told you Bryson Spees, 56, starting at the right tackle spot instead of Justin Witt, who would have made his 25th start today for Coach Doran. Empty set again, three to the wide. Here's Leary launching down the field and overthrows his intended receiver. And that was Anthony Smith. Yes. Freshman from Huntington, Maryland. And, and that's another one that Devin Leary missed. If he keeps that ball in bounds down the field, Smith's got Paris Ford beat. Second and 10. Leary this time a little shorter route. And that's Porter Rooks. That's his third catch of the season. He had played a lot of ball. 61 snaps in the first two games for the true freshman from Myers Park in Charlotte. So now all of a sudden, third and a couple facing the Wolfpack. Remember, they're four for four on third down, the opening drive, including the touchdown. Bam Knights come in the backfield with Leary. Looked like on that first fake snap, Paris Ford was almost at the defensive line mark. Angeline looks like he might be uncovered here, Ronnie. There's the throw to him in the first down. Right at the 32-yard line. Panthers pushed a linebacker that way? It was a great point by you, Wes. They had a linebacker to the inside of Angeline and expected Paris Ford to be able to get over there from the middle of the field to be able to try and play it. But Angeline just sits in that little soft spot in the zone and is able to complete it. The epitome of take what they'll give you, huh? Absolutely, especially on third and short. Mike stays in the ball game. Tries to get to the outside. There's a flag for a face mask on Kalijah Canton. As Bam Knight worked his way to the 34. Personal foul. Face mask. Number eight. Defense. 15 yard penalty and an automatic. First down. So another penalty here on the Panthers. It's been a killer. And, and Kalijah Canton's going to see a lot more time. You see, yeah, there's no doubt about that. But Keyshawn Camp went out on that first drive, and he is now sitting on the sideline. So yep. we're going to see Kalaja Kanti. We're going to see David Green, Tyler Bentley, a lot more in the absence of Keyshawn Camp. Yep. So now first and 10 near the 49. That's Jordan Houston in motion. And he'll get it out the screen, out the flat, and took a big lick. Wow. Brandon George, I think. Nope. 38. Cam Bright. That was just a little flare pass where there looked like there was some space, but Hamlin and Cam Bright got there so quickly. Yep. And we got early movement again. Is that Cansey a second time? Five penalties on Pittsburgh. Three of Outside. them have been first downs. Number eight, defense. Entering the neutral zone and causing an offensive reaction. Five-yard penalty, 
still second down. And, and Wes, as soon as that happened, Devin Danielson started trotting on the field saying, come on, young fella, come on come on off. You need to take a break. Got a little, uh, little talking to from Pat Narduzzi as well. Yep. So second and short after the penalty. Gets to the 40 of Pittsburgh. Looked like Tyrone Riley's hat popped off. So Houston enough for the first down. So Big Riley will have to come out of the ball game for a snap. There's now been three encroachment penalties by Pittsburgh in this game. Great use of the hard count by Devin Leary. The next step, though, is to get the center to snap it when they get in the neutral zone so you get a free play down the field. Mikey Woods sounds like a guy that played nine years in the league. Timothy McKay, by the way, the younger brother of the former Wolfpack quarterback, Matthew McKay, has come in to spell Riley at that left tackle spot here for first and ten. Here's Larry out of the gun. Deep shot right side. And C.J. Riley, the intended receiver, and a flag has been thrown. Potentially on Marquez Williams. And Pittsburgh's really frustrated now with the markers in the secondary. And, and you know what? Pass interference. Pass interference. Number 14, Number 14. Defense. defense. 15 yard penalty and an automatic first down. That is six penalties, Roddy, on the Panthers. Four of them have been converted to first down. So NC State has not had any of these passes completed, but they are putting pressure on the referees. It's, uh, that one's a little ticky tack for me. That one's a little. T there is some contact, but they play man-to-man -man coverage down the field. But the thing that NC State's doing again is they're going to make the referees decide whether or not it's pass interference. So even when you're taking those shots and you're not completing them, you're getting yards out of it. Inside person and Ricky Person for maybe three inside the 25. A lot of personnel, Eric, also being used by Tim Beck. The packages, the designs, he is giving Randy Bates and Pat Narduzzi a lot to look at here in the first couple of series. He is, and he's using the entire field. I love these swing passes, and although they haven't gone for big chunk plays, it continues to pull people out of the box for Pittsburgh, which should loosen up the box to hit some run plays. Well, Bam Knights come back in now. Second and eight. We'll call it from the 24. Leary wants to throw. Ball got knocked loose. He picks it back up, and he's going to end up taking the sack. That's Patrick Jones and Phil Campbell, the linebacker. Rashad Weaver as well for Pittsburgh. First time they've even come close to getting Devin Leary, and it was a ball that got banged out of there. Looked like Jones might have gotten a hand on it to knock it away. Couldn't tell whether it was the fact that, that Jones drove Spice and Spies into yeah. Devin Leary, or if he got a hand in there himself. But either way, it's the same result. You have the longest third down for NC State of the day. Yeah, the Wolfpack, five for five on third down. They pick this one up. They'll stop the presses. Pittsburgh now in their three down look, and this is an extremely tough look for the offensive line. They'll get about six guys at the line of scrimmage, and you never know who's coming. And they do a great job on defense, Randy Bates does, of mixing and matching who's going to come. Well, and NC State was trying to get something set, and the Wolfpack instead elects to call a timeout. Seven all ball game when we come back to Heinz Field. on ACCN and the ESPN app. Packer and Durham bring you the latest news and information from the ACC with special guests from the world of sports. So pull up a chair as I do every week with West Durham and check out you. What about Mark Packer? Well, I don't pull up a chair with Mark. What about the dogs? Yeah. Chester Fuller, Chester Clifford, Fuller. you know, get it all in while we can. The animals, yep. Yep. Third down, and they do run the ball with Knight. And Bam Knight, middle of the field to about the 22-yard line. Okay, Eric. You told, we talked about this during the commercial. NC State and, by the way, Cam Bright down on the play for Pittsburgh, who's had three defensive players shaken up here in the first two NC State possessions. But you were just talking about this play call by Tim Beck and Dave Doran. There isn't going to be a ton of points scored in this game when you look at these two defenses. So by dropping back the pass on third and 16, you risk a sack and getting out of field goal range. 
Christopher Dunn, who had a 53-yarder a week ago. This is a great range for him. You get six, seven yards there and take the risk of getting out of field goal position away. 40-yard field goal, try to put the Wolfpack in front. Dunn hit for 53 last week at Blacksburg. And this is perfect, and NC State leads Pittsburgh 10-7. A nine play, 60 yard drive in about four minutes now, Rowdy. A couple of really good drives from NC State. I've been really impressed with the way Dave Doran's team has looked more like the team that we saw in week one against Wake Forest, where they really took it to them. I mean, they were the aggressor, it seemed like, in that first game, and they have been in this game as well. Tim Beck has been on top of the play calling. It's really had this Pittsburgh defense stumbling. Devin Leary has not been under pressure except one time, which is incredible against the Pittsburgh defensive line that's as good as this one is. So Devin Leary off to a good start. He's 8 of 12 for 44 yards. NC State's got a seven and a half minute advantage in time of possession. And now the onus goes to the pit offense. Trenton Gill to kick it away. Jordan Addison is deep. And Addison will let that hit. Panthers third possession will start from its 25-yard line. Well, Dave Dorn, of course, 93 graduate of Drake, 48-year-old native of Shawnee Mission, Kansas, took the NC State job eight seasons ago. He alternated between Pete Thomas and Brandon Mitchell his first year, and then they kind of settled in, Roddy. Jacoby Brissett took every snap of the 14-15 season, and then the next three years was Ryan Finley. 61 ball games in just two guys. But then a year ago, Matthew McKay started, then all of a sudden Bailey Hockman got a couple games, and they finished with Devin Leary. So the quarterback stability, it's been narrowed a little bit, but Leary's done a pretty good job here today. And honestly, Wes, Dave Doran, felt like Leary was going to be his guy from the beginning, but because of these unprecedented times, you right. have your quarterback having to quarantine and miss a significant chunk of camp, which just made him rusty. And, and so him coming back has certainly given this offense a boost, and it looks like they are playing with a lot of confidence. There's Tim Beck. And Eric's noted he's done a marvelous job kind of setting the field for Leary to be effective. Now the game pivots back to the pit offense. Abana Kanda, second straight carry, and he got chopped down. For the Wolfpack, rallying to the football that time. Malik Dunlap, who started five of the last six a season ago. He's on the field. Tanner Engel is out there again today. He's a welcome return to the lineup, as is Peyton Wilson, his running mate, number 11. You, know, you could tell how frustrated Dave Doran was with having those two guys out last week and the way that they performed without him. Pittsburgh in trouble now, third and long. Pickett cuts it loose and overthrows the intended receiver, Jordan Addison, over in front of the Wolfpack bench. So three and out goes Pittsburgh on offense here. It's a really nice job by that NC State defense. It was basically an all-out blitz, man-to-man -man coverage behind it. And while Pitt picked it up fairly well, not able to complete it, is you get a shot of Tony Gibson, the defensive coordinator for NC State, who, just like Tim Beck, has seemed like he's been a step ahead with the exception of the one big play to Addison. Yep. Thomas will wait on the Cristodulo punt here. Final play of the first period. And Thayer Thomas will call for the fair catch right around the NC State 31-yard line. 15 minutes gone here at Heinz Field. A big play on the second snap from Pittsburgh. But NC State has scored the last 10 in a row to take the lead after one. Game one of our ACC triple header. We're at Heinz Field here in Pittsburgh through a quarter of play. NC State leads number 24, Pittsburgh, 10-7 with Roddy Jones, Eric Wood, West Durham. We welcome you back here to the Steel City. 
And the first play of quarter two is Ricky Person back to the line of scrimmage on the left side. Guys, the ball game's got an interesting tempo to it. NC State's dominated time of possession. The Wolfpack's got 95 yards on 26 plays, and Pitt has helped with a half dozen penalties, Roddy. They certainly have. And if you missed the first quarter, I think the story of it is, is NC State has been aggressive. They have been on the front foot as you get a shot of Timothy McKay, number 52, down. I'm going to play a little hurt, but the, the fact that NC State has looked like the aggressor early in this game is a great sign for Dave Dorn. Right. Now remember Tyrone Riley left the ball game earlier when his helmet got knocked off. And McKay came in to replace him. And now the big fella from Wakefield High School is down. So we're going to take a break. Early second quarter action here at Heinz Field. And while they pause on the field, they help McKay from the grass surface here at Heinz Field. Ooh. That's it's, it's what happens when you're one of those offensive linemen. He would knows it as well as anybody. Those bodies flying around and trying to get rolled up. Yeah, I broke both my legs, did an ACL, six lower Ooh. body surgeries whoa, whoa, in nine whoa, years whoa. in the NFL. Hey, hey, hey. Yep. Okay. It can happen up there in the trenches now. Roddy. I got aggressive real quick. Yeah, it did. <laughs> I don't know we needed all that, but thanks. <laughs> Just rolled that right on out there, didn't you? Yeah. It, it's amazing <laughs> how it rolls off the tongue, too, as many times you got to uh, recite that in any doctor's <laughs> visit or anything else. I hear you. <laughs> A Mezzi in motion, second in the full ten. And back to the catch. Ooh, and a good hard run. Demar Hamlin knocked him down at the 35. But a Mecca a Mezzi, who Roddy, remember a year ago, went to Kelvin Harmon's number three, was look, and I think a lot of people thought he was going to take that leadership role. And we get another jump into the lane, and that time it looked like Servassier Dennis tried to step in there. And here's another penalty, I think, on Pittsburgh. Offside. Number 32 defense entering the neutral zone, causing a reaction from an offensive player. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. Uh, Pat Narduzzi has to be just absolutely livid about those penalties. Pre-snap. And, and it's not like NC State just started doing it on this drive. It's a frustrating way to go from third and long to third and very manageable. Yep. Third and very short here, just a yard. Pittsburgh trying to jump the pile. They hand a the person on the stretch around the edge. He'll beat Hamlin to the corner and up the side. Near midfield goes Ricky Person. Watch the block on the edge. Looks like number 28, Aram again. Just staggers Damar Hamlin and, and allows Ricky Person to get to the outside. Sometimes a block doesn't have to be perfect, but if it's physical and it brings a punch, yep. it does the job. And Paris Ford was trying to do his best Troy Palomalo impersonation, trying to jump the line of scrimmage. <laughs> Here's Leary. Spins it for Devin Carter on the near side. And Carter will spin to the 35 against DeMar Hamlin. Now, Devin Carter is 6'4", former Clayton Comet, redshirt sophomore from just outside of Raleigh. Amezi 6-3. And Leary now going to put it up deep. Downfield, Amezi a Mezzi for the touchdown. And Marquez Williams was the guy defending Ameka Amezi. He's asking for a pass interference call. I didn't see it live. I did not see anything that, that warranted an offensive pass interference live, but Marquez Williams is furious about it. He's asking for a replay. We'll get another shot of it. It's a fantastic job of Amezi of, of adjusting to the football. Wow. With the hand on the back, I can see where Marquez Williams would feel that, but there, was, there wasn't the big push that you expect. It's a 
veteran move by Mecca Meza. 12.56 to go first half. It's a 35-yard strike from Devin Leary to a Mecca Meza. Dunn's point after is good. And now it is a 10-point NC State lead. 17 straight for Dave Doran and the Wolfpack here. Big-time throw by Devin Leary. Ameka Amezi in the end zone. His first touchdown of the year. We continue from Pittsburgh in a moment on ACC Network. Seventeen seven, NC State the lead. 17 in a row for the visiting Wolfpack. Roddy? Well, Tim Beck lit up this week when I said, hey, coach, it's going to challenge you. How much are you going to throw the ball downfield? He said, look, we're going to take our shots. And boy, have they taken their shots yep. so far in this one. The first one that they completed to Emeka Mezzi goes for a touchdown. Jordan Addison will signal for the pair of catch, and that'll put the ball to 25 for the Panthers. By the way, pick it to Addison on the second snap of the game for Pittsburgh. 75 yards. Panther offense has only generated 18 yards since, Roddy. In Tony, their last three possessions. Yeah, Tony Gibson on this NC State defense has been aggressive, and they have played well. We mentioned the fact that Peyton Wilson and Tanner Engel, their top two tacklers from a year ago, are back in this game. So that means Drake Thomas gets to go back to his regular position of Sam Linebacker, which apparently has shored up a lot. Pittsburgh defense been banged up here a little bit in this first half. See what the offense behind Mark Whipple can get going. Pickett moves in the pocket to his right and will dig out for about five yards to the 30. Play was starting to break down around him. C.J. Clark, big 300-pound redshirt freshman from New London, North Carolina, was flushing him out. Second down five for the Panthers. Pickett, lots of time. Now Bales here to the near side. He'll turn the corner and come close to the first down at the 35. He measured a yard short. Chased out by Isaiah Moore, the linebacker. Kenny Pickett's got to be tired. He's run about 70 yards the past two plays yep. combined. But those are two really smart plays from Kenny Pickett. They only rushed three on both of them. Everything covered up. Scrambles to create a third and short. His instinctive plays have gotten better as his career has gone on, too. Yeah, I, I think the comfort that he plays with. He's got command of this offense in his second year under Mark Whipple and is not afraid to use that athleticism. Yep. Third and short now for the Panthers. Pick it the quick throw, trying to go to Mack, who got wrapped up. Cecil Powell, the sophomore from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, who was a wide receiver and then played corner a season ago. Got a hand in there to... Scrape it out of Taysir Max arms. I actually thought that, that Kenny Pickett missed this one. You had double slants at the bottom of the screen with Mack and Jordan Addison, and it looked like Addison was the one that came open, decided to go to the contested catch with Mack, and it fell incomplete. Three and out for the Panthers. Their second consecutive possession offensively of three and out. And now Chris Dulo to punt it to Thayer Thomas. End over end toward Thomas. Takes a bit of a Pittsburgh bounce toward the 20. And that's where they'll touch it up. So the Wolfpack has scored 17 in a row. Devin Leary getting his first start of the year gets the rock when we come back. One of the big stories early in this game has been NC State taking shots down the field. They have not always completed them, forced a number of pass interference calls, but they kept at it. After getting those free yards, you go to it enough times, and Emeka Mezzi with the nice adjustment on the backside, being able to complete it. Maybe a borderline OPI there, but not called, and Dave Doran's group has been aggressive on both sides of the football. Yep. 17 in a row for the Wolfpack, who's built a 10-point lead. We're early in period two at Heinz Field in Pittsburgh. First of three for you. All of them conference offerings today here on ACC Network. Leary, stop and go, looking downfield. C.J. Riley cannot haul it in against Marquez Williams. That ball was thrown about as well as you can throw that ball. 
and Marquez Williams played that as well as you can play it. Waited to the last minute. This is a guy who's had a, a pass interference called against him, was asking for an offensive pass interference on the other side, but that's what you got to have when you're a man-to-man -man corner. Short memory, nice play by Williams. Yep. And C.J. Riley is a handful. It's 6-4 out of Coconut Creek, Florida. In the flat, Porter Rooks. Second catch of the ball game in front of DeMar Hamlin. Stumbling down at the 27. It'll be third and a full four here for the Wolfpack. Back-to-back -back second and long calls on back-to-back -back drives. Tim Beck dials up an out pattern to the safety guy who he's got man, and he's playing 10 yards off of him and gets to a third and manageable. We're going to have a penalty here. At some point, Gibson's got to start set, uh, <laughs> snapping these because offside. <laughs> Number six. That, defense. That is on uh, John Morgan, by the way, defensive end who also results in a first down. Ended up twisting an ankle or something on the play. You try and do too many, too many calisthenics trying to get out of the way. Too many Pilates trying to get out of the way, and you can you can pull something. Eric Wood would like a word with Grant Gibson. The Wolfpack center. Here's Leary throwing for the first. Cut back up the field. Keon the same. Sophomore from Lumberton, North Carolina. Pulls it in for the first out to 45. And this is what NC State expected the offense to look like coming into this season. But Devin Leary having to isolate himself for so long didn't allow it. He has looked incredibly sharp so far in this. Sure has. Now Leary going to load and throw again. And and another flag has been thrown on a ball intended for the 5-11 Lassane. I think I think this one you are going to get against NC State. Nope. Oh, it's against Pitt. And Marquez Williams is flustered. Pass interference. Pass interference. Number 14 defense. 15-yard penalty and an automatic first down. For Pat Narduzzi with 10 and a half minutes to go in the first half. The pass interference penalties and the penalties of a whole have become now a problem for Pittsburgh. I think it was that, that first shove. I actually thought it was Lassane that had that first shove, which is why I said that, but it was Marque Marquez Williams. And it's, it's been a frustrating start so far, but I just keep at it. Yep. In pit territory after the penalty. Leary with time shoots it down the field and through the hands of the intended receiver anthony smith the freshman from maryland had it dead to rights and, and, and the throw was almost too good i mean that was right between the eight and the seven right in his hands he didn't have to stretch out for it or anything sometimes passes are thrown too well and you have too long to think about it and that was the case there with smith second time they tried to go to smith Is basically wide open, too. In motion, that's Rooks. He'll get the ball on the perimeter. And got chopped down and a flag thrown from behind the play. Servassier Dennis trapped Porter Rooks in front of the Pittsburgh bench. Flags have we had in this game so far? Uh, this will be, well, we've had 11 accepted penalties. <laughs> This could be, this is on NC State, I think. Pat Narduzzi will want to back up the Wolfpack here. This will be the third on NC Holy. State. Number 84, offense. Ten-yard penalty, second down. Josiah Provillian, Provillian rather. Wes, right there, if you're Pat Narduzzi, you could put them in third and 10, third and nine, right. whatever they're going to be right there. And if I have Pitt's defensive line, I'd probably, probably decline that one. And you're not in field goal range either. So second and 20. About five minutes gone here in the second period. And now we get five more on a procedure call. I think Lassane. Full start. Number 15. Yep. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Second down. A flag-filled first half, Roddy Jones. Well, yes, it certainly has been. <laughs> and a lot of them pre-snap. That is 13 of them in the first half. Nine for the Panthers, now four on the Wolfpack. Well, it has uh, not been the cleanest first half we've ever seen. And as, as Eric mentioned, that, that Delta package, the third down package that Pitt goes to, they've already gone to this, this second and long. Yep. 
Try to get Bam Knight going. Left side cuts it back into the secondary and down to the 42-yard line. Pretty strong run by Knight. And that third down package only has three down linemen. You're putting the three linebackers on the field, and then you're having all DBs after that. So what does NC State do? They run the football, and that physicality up front pays dividends. Bam Knight has run the ball so well this year. I like the call from Tim Beck, and now they're what, nine, seven, eight yards away from, from being in field goal range. So. Sure. Tyrone Riley was out blocking for Knight. And now we're going to get another Pittsburgh timeout here Turn with 9.06 to Two. go in this first Two. half. They're second of the half. Sit tight here. Ten-point lead and a third down and a dozen for the Wolfpack when we come back after this. I did, and based upon there being only three down linemen, he got matched up on Pinnock, yeah. and about 10 yards down the field, dumped him on his back. Yep. Yeah, I wanted to say something about it, but. Um, I think the gates are open now. I got it. Well, we got a full Sunday for you on ACC Network. Starts at noon with a pair of field hockey matches. North Carolina, Karen Shelton's great program against Duke. Then Boston College against Louisville, and then two on the card from women's soccer. Miami, Virginia, followed by number three, Clemson, and number 11, Duke, all day Sunday right here on ACC Network. Third and a dozen, and a quick handoff to Bam Knight out of the timeout. And the play will be stopped at the 41-yard line, and now fourth and 11, and... I think this is a little beyond the range of Christopher Dunn, who hit the 53-yarder at Lane Stadium last Saturday night. So here's Trenton Gill to punt. Get a shot at Tim Beck, and the job he's done is, is certainly worth talking about again. But the way this NC State defense is played, I like the decision to go ahead and punt it. Not that there was much of a decision on third and 11, but right. they're going to give the defense. This offense is going to be pinned back deep. And Gill's punt is short. Madison a fair catch. It's inside the 15 at the 14-yard line. And that's where Pittsburgh will take over after NC State runs seven plays. So the Panthers, who trail by 10, and really, Eric and Roddy, the first real adversity for Pat Narduzzi's team comes in game four here. Yeah, and I, I want to see, see this Pitt team try and run the football uh, and, and be physical up front. This NC State defense gave up 400, 314 yards against Virginia Tech last week. And so far, Kenny Pickett's got 24 yards rushing. Everybody else has three. Yeah. So this offensive line is going to have to pick it up. I'm going to see Pitt string together a drive here. Pittsburgh has 27 yards of offense after the second snap of the ball game. Here's Pickett. Down the field and looking for Shockey. Jock Louis, who's across midfield. He'll be tackled at the 41 of NC State. A big throw from Kenny Pickett. The tackle made by Shaheen Battle of the Wolfpack. NC State only rushed three again. There was really no pass rush on Kenny Pickett. So the double move by Jock Louis, he's able to find him down the field. Nice throw in front of the safety. Yep, into Wolfpack territory. Biggest play since the touchdown. and. Israel Abanakanda gets the handoff on first down. The young man from Brooklyn, New York, out of Abraham Lincoln, maybe more known for its basketball program in the in the borough than football, but Abanakanda came in here last week. Abanakanda had 41 yards on nine carries and looked pretty stout against the Ville. Second and eight. Pick it. Guns it near side catch made stepping out of bounds Trey Tipton his second catch of the year. I like Mark Tipton, Whip one of those fifth year guys. Yeah, I like Mark Whipple's decision to, here to say, hey, if you're only going to rush three, we're going to have some long developing plays because we know we're going to get the protection. This is a go on the outside and a deep out from Tipton. Can he pick it once again all day to throw the football? Pick it two for two on the drive here. And now, first and ten inside the Wolfpack 20. Vanakanda. No game. Got knocked back there. 
Eric, you see anything here that stymied Pitt's running game? Because it's one of the focal points for the Panthers was to run the ball better. They've only got 29 yards on. Let's see, looks like uh, 18, no, I'm sorry, 12 tries here today. Here's Pickett, second and a little more than 10. Back inside, this is Jordan Addison trying to find some room. And he'll run right back to the original line at the 19. To your point, Wes, I think Aleem McNeil, the nose guard, has done a great job of holding the point in the middle at that nose position. NC State runs a 3-3-5. It's extremely important for the nose guard not to get pushed back because there's only three linebackers, only six big guys in the box on each play, even on running downs. And I thought he's done a great job so far. Big Aleem McNeil out of Sanderson High School in Raleigh, wearing that number 29. And when he gets all bunched up on his back, it could be anything. <laughs> uh, Aleem McNeil is a man that needs to be num wearing the number zero, in my opinion. Well, he'll have to negotiate that with or at least the single digit for starters. I mean, you know, you know how I feel about the single digits. They I know. Should, they should the go bigger to, guys should get the single digits. They should all go to the bigger guys. You're talking about a great athlete. He played Mike linebacker in high school. Maybe he was a 20-something number in high school playing linebacker, yeah, and he still gets it at the nose position in college football. Think of how good he'd look at number two. Yeah. Well, he's wearing two nine now, but you can't read the two because it gets all tucked up under the jerseys. And you know, when, and everything. And when we when we talked to the, to Mark Whipple, he called out a Lee McNeil by number. He said 29 has the potential to be a problem in this game. By the way, late night tonight, guys. Following Clemson, Virginia, it's the huddle after dark. Well, at least that's what I call it. Jordan Cornett, Eric McLean, EJ Manuel, Mark Rick. Complete breakdowns of all five ACC games comes your way tonight. The huddle late night. How about Emac last night? Goes up there to Truist Field and watches the Deeks. Put 66 on Mike Menner and the Campbell Camels. Well done, Eric. Got to hop back in less than 12 hours yeah. later. And now you know what it's like. Put in a full day's work. Now on you the, know what it's like, big fella. Oh boy, you Getting a two a day in. <laughs> Cornette will hold it all together for you, and those guys will be coming up at halftime as well. Third down. Here's Pickett. Launching, took a big shot, and it got picked. Intercepted Jakeen Harris. The sophomore from Savannah trying to run it back. He's got a banana candy to beat for a touchdown. Yeah, this, is, this one's going to come back, Wes. It was a big shot on Kenny Pickett, who's still down on the field. Uh, I think you're going to get a target. Watching the passer with targeting. Number 19 defense. The play is under further review. It was Joshua Pierre-Louis who... Yep. Had the, the wide open shot on Kenny Pickett. I think he just went a little high there. You saw that right away. Stepped right in front, did Harris. It will negate the interception. Yeah, and, that, and that's, that's about as clear cut as it gets off of one view. Lowers the head. He launches at the head of Kenny Pickett. Ooh. That is a defenseless player. This this one this one's a no doubter. Yep. And, and Pierre Louis, a freshman. So the, the coaching point there is you're in great position. You're going to put a great hit on the quarterback. Aim for the number and go with the shoulder right in the number of the quarterback. And then it's a legal hit, and he still feels it, by the right. way. I think what drew him a little bit higher is Kenny Pickett started his throwing motion. So as he's trying to hit him, he's also trying to almost bat the ball at the last second. Uh -huh. And that makes him go high and gets him right under the chin. And hopefully Kenny Pickett's OK. You hate to see these types of plays happen. You know, and, and Kenny Pickett just means so much to this Pittsburgh team. A four-year starter and, and just a great ambassador for this university. And, and it looked like Abacanda. After further review, the ruling of targeting is confirmed. Number 19 is disqualified. 15-yard penalty and an automatic. First down. All right, a couple of notes here. Pierre Louis was filling in for Tyler Baker Williams, who, along with Justin Witt, did not make the trip for NC State. So now, a little reshuffling, if you will, and this secondary has become a spot of injury. Remember, Khalid Martin went down last Saturday night, Blacksburg. Good report on him, by the way, which that was a scary looking play, Rod. It certainly was, yeah. I have good news on the sideline for the Pitt Panthers. Kenny Pickett was allowed to keep his helmet on 
Uh, so he's got it on on the sideline. He didn't even need to be evaluated in the tent. So I would expect him back on the game in the game for this next snap. Here is Davis Bevel, by the way. And we got some movement. Number 53 offense. And it's Jake Cradle, the penalty. right guard First of down. Pittsburgh. But Davis Bevel is a 6'5 redshirt freshman from Greenville, South Carolina, whose numbers on the year are very modest, 3 of 5 for 13 yards in terms of passing. And we'll keep an eye on Kenny Pickett here after the snap here for Bevel. Bevel is going to throw and slightly behind Addison, second down. And Pickett will come back on the field, I think, for Pittsburgh here. Yep. So Wes, you mentioned the the injuries in this NC State yep. secondary. And Tayshawn Smith is out for this game. Rakeem Ashford left the game last week. Uh, Khalid Martin already down with the hit the other night in Blacksburg. Chris correct. Ingram has not been able to come back. Yep, and Tyler Baker Williams. Yeah, Tyler Baker Williams. Yeah. Inside hard running that time. That's Vincent Davis inside the ten. So third and goal coming up. At the nine yard line. By the way, uh, Vincent Davis has had the bulk of the work. Banacanda's come in. A.J. Davis uh, injured last week against Louisville. Not dressed today to play for Coach Narduzzi. And Wes, you're not going to see Israel Abanacanda on third down. Nope. Here's Pickett. Far side throw and intended, I believe, for Addison. And he got teed up from Malik Dunlap. Tell you what, Eric, you noted this 6'4, 220. When Malik Dunlap gets there, you know it. Yeah, he is an impressive specimen at corner, and that was a heck of a lick he put on as well on Jordan Addison, the freshman. Yep. And Malik Dunlap, what an asset he is for the Wolfpack, being able to fill in the run. We saw a big hit from him earlier. We see a big hit there. This guy could play anywhere on the field, it appears. Yep. And here is Alex Kessman, who hit three field goals last week in the victory against Louisville. And this one is punched through from right at about 25 yards. So Pittsburgh's on the board. They stopped the 17 in a row by NC State, and they cut it to a touchdown deficit. Wolfpack with the ball in the lead when we come back to Heinz Field. ACC Network Football is brought to you by Mako Medical, proud supporter of ACC Athletics. And Mako, one of the companies doing a lot of the work in the testing fields for COVID-19. Alex Kessman's kick toward Ricky Person, no return. Of course, we got word late this morning. Cam Newton has tested positive for COVID-19, and that is, that'll be notable. And Eric, it's been an interesting week in the NFL. College football seemingly had to do the dance with the understanding of who would be and who wouldn't be available. Now it trickled into the National Football League this week, too. Yeah, as we're standing here in Heinz Field, I'm sure there's a lot of Steelers fans tuned in as well, and the Steelers get their game against the Titans postponed. And now we have Cam Newton, one of the starting quarterbacks in the NFL with the coronavirus. So it is definitely affecting the NFL in a big way this week. Yep. Under five to go, Roddy. Devin Leary's had an outstanding afternoon so far, 13 of 19 for 118 and two scores. And First down for Jordan Houston, who falls forward for maybe a yard and a half. And I think this is a big, big drive, big series for this NC, excuse me, for this Pittsburgh defense. I mean, okay. NC State has really driven the ball and done basically whatever they've wanted to down the field. They put pressure on them. You've had offsides penalties. It's been incredibly right. sloppy from this Pitt defense, which we haven't seen so far this year. This is a big, it's a big series for them. Ten penalties, 90 yards on Pittsburgh in the first half. And most of those, most of those pre-snap or passing fans. Right. Wolfpack's got half that many for 44. Here's Leary. Quick flip into the perimeter and misses Houston. 
Rashad Weaver, big 17, was in the throw lane that time. At some point, we're going to get a fake swing pass to another shot down the field. I don't know when it's coming. I thought it might have been then because they've set it up extremely well. And Pitt's defense plays so much man-to-man -man right. that if the receiver goes out and shows that he's going to block him like he has every time on those swing pass, it may be a great shot down the field for NC State. You got Angeline Thomas and Carter to the bottom of the screen here for Leary on third and eight. Almost nine for the Wolfpack. Six guys down around the line of scrimmage. They usually only bring four. The question is, other than those three down, who's coming? Larry in trouble. Evades the sack. Now tries to flip it and beyond the reach of a Mezzi in front of the Wolfpack bench. So, well, nice. they got in there that time. Yeah, it was a nice job of, of maneuvering in the pocket from Devin Leary. He showed that last week as well. Watch these guys. Four guys coming. Ooh. Jones and Weaver almost met in the backfield. They were able to step up and almost completed that pass. DJ Turner, by the way, is going to take the punt here of Trent Gill, as you see. Pittsburgh leave the field defensively after a three and out by NC State. That's their first of the day, by the way. Pittsburgh forcing a three and out of the Wolfpack. And with 4.03 to go. And one time out, Pat Narduzzi's team's going to get the ball back here. A little wobbly punt right at DJ Turner. And the Maryland transfer is on his horse. 50, 45, and Turner run out of bounds in Wolfpack territory at the 40-yard line. Remember, Addison was shaken up, so DJ Turner, who only enrolled in school here, Roddy and Eric, back early September, because that's when the Big Ten had shut it down and Turner was looking for a new home. He had a relationship with some folks on the Pittsburgh coaching staff. He played 31 games at Maryland, but didn't get here till late August. Yeah, look at the right side of your screen. You saw that block by number 30, Brandon George. In the past, that would have been a light up block where you just drill the guy, but does a great job of just doing the run by. Yep. Just runs in front of him, puts his back out. It's a, it springs DJ Turner. All right, you said big play for the big possession for the Pitt defense. How big's this for Kenny Pickett in the offense? Well, getting great field position certainly helps. I think it was bigger for the defense, though. You just needed that confidence of a three and out. And now Pittsburgh elects to use its last timeout of this first half. Timeout. Timeout. Pitt. Pitt. Their third and final of the half. So under four to go, and Mark Whipple and his senior quarterback from Oakhurst, New Jersey, will huddle. Pickett, by the way, four of eight for 140 yards. He is seventh all-time in passing yardage coming into the ball game today. He's got a chance to get to the top three. 2,300 yards would put him, 2,300 more yards would put him in the neighborhood of Tino Sinceri. And Kit Pickett seemingly has played here a long time because why? In 2017, at the end of the year, he led them to the win over number two, Miami. The next year, they made the ACC championship game. Last year, one of four quarterbacks in the ACC to throw for more than 3,000 yards. And he's on the Maxwell list, among others. And you see the five touchdowns, and he's added one today on the long ball to Jordan Addison at the start of the game. Pickett puts it up downfield over Jacques Louis' head incomplete. Cecil Powell in coverage for the Wolfpack. You were mentioning Kenny Pickett, where he stands on the all-time list. Current Browns offensive coordinator, former coordinator of mine in Buffalo, Alex Van Pelt leading it. I sent him a text this week. He had over 11,000 passing yards, and all he had to note, minus 119 rushing yards. <laughs> That's all he had to say. Here's Pickett, second down. Guns at near side. Turner will step out of bounds, but shy of the first down by about a yard. Eric mentioned earlier the fact that NC State was throwing those easy access outs and Pitt had taken them away. Yeah. And that is something that is a staple of this Pitt offense. When they get into second and long, they're going to go there consistently if you give it to them to create third and shorts. Turner and Jacques Louis go to the far side. Taysir Mack, Roddy here to the boundary on third and short. Yeah, it looks like he's got one on one. Play fake, Pickett tried to keep it, and the Wolfpack makes the play. Aleem McNeil. Pulls him to the ground, 
Tayon Palmer was back there, the safety, but it's McNeil, big 29, who's winning that battle inside. Yeah, Lee McNeil does a fantastic job. Palmer coming off the edge in place of Josh Pierre-Louis. Those two guys meet there. How many times have we called a Lee McNeil's name? Yep. He's having a fantastic game. We thought it might be a good matchup, Eric. It's proved to be. It has been, and he's he's edging out Morrissey there. That was not his guy, though. That wasn't Jimmy Morrissey, the center. That was Gabe who he attacked. Here's Pickett again. Reroutes it. There's the turn. Caught on fourth down. And Pittsburgh picks it up. Gutty play by Pickett. Well, it was – Kenny Pickett made that play because Jordan Addison's open. Excuse me, DJ Turner is open as soon as that, as soon as he completes his route on a little whip route. But Pickett's ability to evade the rush and then get out and find Turner is what made that play on a big fourth down conversion. Yep. So now the clock toward two minutes. Pickett on first and ten with time. Now going to bail and run with it and will dive inside the twenty toward another first down. Looks like he's right at the stick. Well, just short. Under two minutes to play now here in this first half. Kenny Pickett's ability to continue to hurt NC State when they only rush three has been impressive. Yep. Tommy Gibson's going to have to think about sending more. They bring the extra guy this time. Turner almost makes a great catch in front of Tanner Engel at the pylon. So it'll be second down, or third down in short, I should say, with 142 to go here in this uh, first half. The last third and one, we saw Lee McNeil make a big play, big number 29 in the middle. He is actually not on the field for this play, and so we'll see if someone else can step up for the Wolfpack on this third and one. They plug C.J. Clark, a redshirt freshman, in there. And they hand the ball to Vincent Davis, and he will have the first down and more got to the 15 and then finally got turned back by Vi Jones one of the linebackers looks like Tanner Ingles down West number 10 got yep. missed the game a week ago tell you what Ingles is one tough cat he is and, and if, if he we'll see how serious it is he's going to be tended to but that would be another injury in the secondary that's already down. Yep. Four players, five players by my count so far. Rakeem Ashford was doubtful for this game. Yep. I've not seen him so far, but he's the guy who played in place of Tanner Engel a week ago. Right. Rakeem Ashford doubtful for the ball game. Khalid Martin was shaken up last week. He was also helping after the Ashford injury, right? Yeah. Tyler Baker Williams announced last night not making the trip. And then you mentioned Ingram and Smith, who are corners. Then Pierre Louis ejected for the targeting call early in the ballgame. And they went away on the other side, so hard to tell through traffic maybe what happened with Ingram, right? Yeah, but on the play, it was a it was a nice job of Pitt breaking a tendency. They flipped Carter Warren, number 77, from his normal side on the left. Went with a tackle over formation on the right, and then they ran back to the weak side behind where Tanner, uh, excuse me, behind where Carter Warren had just left. And that was something that NC State kind of pointed out to us. They love running behind Carter Warren. Yep. So what do they do? They go the other way, break the tendency, and they're able to get the first down. They've had some awfully good tackles at the University of Pittsburgh. Carter Warren is a redshirt junior from New Jersey. Pat Narduzzi said he is a different player than he was a year ago here. He said, you, know, you can talk about the light coming on or whatever the case may be. He said, Carter Warren is here. And true freshman Devin Boykin has come in to replace Tanner Ingram in the secondary, number 12. All right. Pickett goes under center here on first and 10. Play fake. Look at the throw. Shot the way in space and a big time wrap. That's Boykin, the freshman you were talking about, Roddy, out of Greensboro, North Carolina. Making a big play in space and a loss of three on the play. It's been a couple times Pitt has tried to get their guys in space to create a, a play down the field, give them an opportunity to make a play. Tanner Engel back on the field as you saw Devin Boykin run off. But NC State's done a great job of tackling in space. Pitt needs a touchdown to tie here in the final minute. Pick it. This is Taysu at the five and taken out of bounds. Pulled down by Cecil Powell. 
So the clock stops with 39 seconds left. And the clock stopping is really important. That's a nice job of Taysier Mack getting out of bounds because Pitt doesn't have any timeouts. So if that thing keeps running, even here, if you're not able to get the first down right. and you're tackled in bounds, you're going to have to hustle that field goal team onto the field because you've used all three timeouts. Third down and three. Davis and Zelinkas in the backfield. And a timeout taken by NC State. And I think that's a smart call because essentially – the, the run is not completely off the table, but it puts a lot of pressure on you to get another playoff quickly. If you get the first down, you got to run up and spike it. Right. If you don't get the first down, then you got to hustle that, that field goal team onto the field and kick it. And you have time, 39 seconds. That's plenty of time to be able to do that, but you are going to have to hustle. So you want your guys on defense to be aware of that. I don't want to overstate the, the importance of the play here. NC State gets the ball to start the second half. Yep. Now both schools are out of timeouts, Roddy. Yep. I mean, I think I think NC State is staking everything on this stand right here. On this play? On this play. Okay. I, I don't think they've got any intentions of trying to score before halftime. It's, it's not, it's not going to – they're not that type of offense where they're going to be able to go down in, in 25 seconds with one or no timeouts. Yeah. So as a coach, you're counting on stopping this play right here, and then you deal with the rest of it after. Let's see what Mark Whipple comes up with because Alex Kessman – has hit four in a row, including one earlier today, just a few moments ago from 27. Jacques Louis to the top. Got that tackle over formation. Grant to the is the top. tight end to the near side with Mack. And Pickett in trouble immediately. Faked the handoff and then got knocked to the ground. Jones again is in there to blow it up. And now here's Kessman with the first half clock winding down. It's a nice job of Wilson. Kenny Pickett was trying to read him. He was able to get in front and make that play. It'll be a 29-yard field goal for Alex Kessman. And the kick is good. That's now five in a row for Kessman. And Pittsburgh two within four of the Wolfpack. with four seconds to go in this first half. And I think what, what the last two drives have given Pitt is a little bit of confidence going in to going into the locker room, especially defensively. I mean, NC State had basically done whatever they wanted to on the offensive side of the football, but Pitt getting that stop and then the subsequent score has done a nice job of, of really changing the momentum of the first half. Don't forget the huddle at the half. Check of our first 30 minutes. Also a look back at last year's ACC championship Ooh. game, which will be replayed tonight. Frank Howard Field, Memorial Stadium, Clemson, South Carolina. By the way, Virginia 1-8-1, and all-time at Clemson. You've got to go to 2001 to find the last time the Cavaliers have won in the upstate. It's, a, it's going to be a great test for Virginia to see how far they've come from, from last year to this one. Right. This Clemson team is, is not quite as good as the one a year ago right now. And we'll see where Virginia is. Uh, it, hopefully for Virginia fans, it's not an exact replay of the ACC championship game. Battle of the Tigers to be tested tonight because already a lot of people want to talk about next Saturday night. Kessman's going to hang this up on the final play of the first half. In fact, there will not be a return. So... In the stat sheet, NC State will get a snap from its 25. And we're going to get one more snap from NC State before this one goes to halftime. I don't think that you can overstate how well I think this offense has played from a physicality standpoint up front right. and then from a composure standpoint that's, to Devin Leary. That's the thing. After last position. Saturday, when Pittsburgh hit the big play to open the game, Roddy, the fact NC State then scored 17 points in their next three possession yep. told me a lot about the Wolfpack. Told me about the confidence that Tim Beck has in Devin Leary. Those shots down the field, he's put a lot on his plate in this one. But it all started with that offensive line being physical in the run game early. And Devin Leary will touch a knee, and that will get the teams to the locker room. So, NC State, who fell behind 7 to nothing on the second snap of the game, then rattled off 17 in a row to take a 10-point lead. And here in the final five minutes of this first half, Pittsburgh ran 20 plays, covered better than 100 yards, and they end up kicking a couple field goals to draw to within four. So the number 24 team in the country trails the Wolfpack by four here at the break.
I think you have to commend NC State for holding Pittsburgh to field goals in those situations. Pitt's got to be better putting the ball in the end zone when they get down in the red zone, which has been an issue for them really the last couple of seasons. Well, Dave Doran coming here Mike's side to visit with Eric Wood, and uh, I would suspect he's pleased with the opening uh, 30 minutes of play. Let's go downstairs to E. Wood. Coach, some questions coming into the game about who the starting quarterback would be. Talk about the play of Devin Leary here in the first half. Yeah, he looks good. Uh, he's playing comfortable football. He's making good throws, giving his receivers a chance, doing some things with his feet. Your defense is flying around, making some big hits out there. Yeah. Did they come out with a chip on their shoulder after last week? Yeah, I mean, they're uh, embarrassed <laughs> is a nice way to say what they did last week. So there's a lot of pride in that group and on that side of the ball from a coaching staff standpoint. And, Kids are going to battle. It's going to be a great four-quarter game. I mean, Pitt's a really good football team. Thanks, Coach. All right, thank you, guys. All right, Dave Doran, thanks for the visit. NC State came in here, survived the early haymaker from the Panthers on the picket to Addison. Touchdown, came back. Touchdown to Angeline. A field goal from Dunn. The big ball to Amezi, and the Wolfpack's up four. Jordan Cornette in the huddle is next. Welcome into your ACCN Halftime Report. I'm your host, Jordan Cornett. I got two-thirds of the huddle crew here in terms of analysts, like Coach Mark Rick, <laughs> Eric McLean, and a surprising start here, NC State leading 17-13. Not necessarily how you guys would have pegged that first half. Sit tight. Let's talk about how we got there with the highlight here for the first half action. And it's a pit team seeking to get their first 4-0 start in the last 20 years. Right out of the gates, Kenny Pickett. And what happened here with the pack defense, Emac Jordan Addison? JC, we forgot to cover the best wide receiver on the team. Just an absolute coverage bust. Leads to the 75-yard touchdown over the top. Panthers early, but Devin the Dude Leary was all night, like I said, a porch light. Sussed this one up. Emeka Amezi for the touchdown. The Wolfpack leads 17-7. Pickett this time drops back. Scary moment. Appears to be an interception going the other way, but it called back due to roughing the passer. Another play, look at that one. And NC State leads this one, 17-13. Coach, this offense, Tim Beck's got his quarterback and Devin Leary. The Wolfpack shining early. What have you seen? Well, they're very patient with the run game to start the game. You know, when it comes to offensive and defensive line, in the running game, uh, NC State's won both sides of the ball. I mean, uh, you know, they have uh, run the ball at will, almost at will early in the game. Uh, Ricky Persons getting a lot of good catch, a lot of good runs, but also uh, getting them to jump off sides. I mean, you know, great defensive linemen. You know, they always want to crowd the line of scrimmage. They always want to get the cadence perfectly, and and NC State took advantage of that. Got at least four or five offsides just to keep drives going or reduce yardage. You know, third downs they were like. Six out of nine NC State offensively, which is fantastic. So just real patient game plan. And then some, every once in a while, a beautiful uh, decision to make a throw and some great throwing and catching, as you saw. Emac, everywhere you looked coming into this one, everyone was picking the Panthers. Slow out of the gates. What have you seen gone wrong for Pitt? Yeah, it's all about the penalties, like Coach just alluded to. And, and a little bit, some pass interference penalties that, you know, Paris Ford has been screaming at those officials. He doesn't agree with them, but a ton of them have been offsides. And just the quarterback, Leary, doing an unbelievable job with his cadence, whether it's hand clapping or his voice, to get them to jump offsides for easy first downs for better yard placement. It's been a fantastic job by him. Pitt has nine penalties for 90 yards. I mean, when you give a team – basically a free 100 yards, it's going to be hard to beat them. And that's exactly what Pitt's doing. I expect that locker room, they're fired up right now. And I'm sure Narduzzi is getting after those defensive guys and just saying, hey, let's dial it down, play our football, go out, go out there and win this game. Yeah, a whole lot of laundry on the field on both sides, but more heavily Pitt with those penalties. Got to shore that up. It's going to be a fantastic second half. Moving back to the field, though, Jordan Addison early making the statement, but it's been the pack. Who have been the story? Wolfpack lead this one 17-13. More halftime report. To the matchup. And Clemson handles business. Pack handling business in the first half. Emeka Amezi with the touchdown. Pack lead at 17-13. More second half action on the other side. 
Second half from Heinz Field in Pittsburgh. NC State leads number 24, Pittsburgh 17-13. Great to be with Roddy Jones, West Durham, and our tremendous ACC Network crew. Quite a first half for Devin Leary, Roddy. Yeah, Devin Leary got the start this week after appearing in the second half last week. And Wes, I thought that he has been fantastic in this game. Commanded the offense, shown the arm strength. 13 of 21 for 118 yards and two touchdowns. But overall, it's just his poise throughout the game. He's moved well in the pocket. There you see a touchdown pass to Kerry Angeline. Had a great back shoulder pass. Maybe an offensive pass interference. Not called to Emeka Mezzi. Devin Leary's done a nice job in this game. Sure has. And you see the details, 118 yards, couple of touchdowns. And NC State has run the ball enough to kind of keep Pitt honest. Panthers kick it to the Wolfpack to start half two. There'll be no return, and NC State will scrimmage from its 25-yard line. Let's go downstairs. Eric Wood visited with Pat Narduzzi. Yeah, I talked to Coach Narduzzi coming out of the half. The big things for him that he wants to see from his team in the second half, first off, eliminate penalties defensively. He's really frustrated with all of the offsides. Those are unforced turnover, unforced penalties. And then offensively, he said his guys got to make plays, especially in the red zone. They were very bad in the red zone a week ago in scoring touchdowns, and it's coming back to bite them again this week. That's how Alex Kessman, Roddy, has kicked five field goals in the last two ball games, the last game and a half, technically. Yeah, that's been something that's plagued Pitt for the last couple of weeks, as Eric said, and the, the response to me is to be able to run the football. First down, person. And tries to move the stack of blue shirts a yard, maybe two to the 27. There's DeMar Hamlin in the mix. Fifth year senior, went to Central Catholic here in Pittsburgh. And I thought Pitt's defense on their last time out in the first half did a nice job of reestablishing dominance, if you will. The physicality was better. They forced a three and out from NC State. Let's see if they can continue out in the second half. Bunch look here to the bottom of the screen. Counter with Person. Tried to get to the perimeter out of one tackle, and then Paris Ford banged him out of bounds at the 30. Tyler Bentley, the redshirt sophomore, looked like he had him dead to rights. Something that Randy Bates, a defensive coordinator yep. for Pitt, told us during the week, they got to tackle better. Yep. And that was an example. You took a play that would have forced a third and six, made it a third and three. NC State in the first half, third down, they were six of nine. Remember, they hit four of their first four to start the ball game. <laughs> Which tied the number that, the, the high number of the year that Pitt had given up against Austin P. Yeah. Person again. And nothing there. Servassier Dennis in the middle of that one. One of the best names in the country. Oh, first team all ACC name team. Storm Duck and Servassier Dennis. Divine Diablo would like Divine a word, Divine Diablo sir. would like to talk to us about that. A little 2 2 Atwell action. Yeah, here we go. Let's see, here we go. I knew it. We just throw one out and it leads to five. <laughs> DJ Turner now. And that's notable because Jordan Addison was shaken up toward the end of the first half. We saw Turner return the punt. We'll see if Addison comes back to the field with the Panthers on the offensive possession. Huge stop for Pitt on defense, forcing a three and out to start the second half. By the way, for NC State, that's two straight three and outs on their last two full possessions. Turner backtracks inside the 10. Working up the near side, gets to the 15 and got pulled out of bounds. And that was Cecil Powell. And of course, when we talk about these conference games, remember the Atlantic and Coastal flags have been lowered this year. There are no divisions. The top two teams by conference winning percentage will play for the ACC title. And that championship game is scheduled for either the 12th or the 19th. And of course, for the first time in their unbelievable football history, Notre Dame is in a conference and they're eligible to compete for the championship. I'll, well. I'll believe that they're in the conference again when we see them again, Wes. It's been too long since yeah. we've seen them play a football game. Scheduled for Florida State next week. <laughs> Panthers at the 19. Pick it on a play fake on first down. Kenny loops it, going back for Shockey Jock Louis, who looked like he was on a cross from the far side. Tanner Engel was there along with Jakeen Harris for the Wolfpack. They ran a couple of deep over routes. You'll see Jacques Louis and Taysier Mack cross right here. Actually, Mack comes back out on a 
sort of a post corner. That never got up. The clearance on that was not particularly sharp. No, it wasn't. It was two by two look, and Vincent Davis tries to get going and going to have a hard time doing so. Cecil Powell, this corner. Remember now, Tashawn Smith, Chris Ingram were guys who they were counting on in the secondary, but number four has found the football a lot today. You, you, the have, Wolfpack secondary. you have to be impressed by the way this NC State secondary has responded despite all of the injuries, and Cecil Powell part of that. Yep. All of a sudden, third and a dozen for Kenny Pickett. Shoots it from Mack, caught the ball at the 30, and they measure his forward progress on the step back to the 29. We might need a measurement here. Well, Mack ran that, that pattern, that route right at the sticks, and I'm not, not exactly sure that. They called it a first down. Yeah, well, there you go. That was, I guess, the perfect distance for the route. I thought it might have ended up a little bit short, but you're not the only one. They'll run it with Davis here on first down. Whoa. That Drake Thomas, who lowers the boom on Vincent Davis. If you want to know how mightily Pitt has struggled to run the football today, 38 yards before that rush, 38 yards rushing, 26 of them had come from Kenny Pickett. And most of those on scrambles. Second down. Pickett to Mack at the 40 and a hit from Engel right there. That'll be enough for another Pittsburgh first down. Tanner Engel, the junior from Orlando, back in the lineup today for Coach Doran in the Wolfpack. And they need a reset of the play clock here, I guess. Indeed, they do. Aleem McNeil comes off the field for NC State as well. Ibrahim Conti with it. I don't know what Pitt thought was going I, on as you see Tanner Engel trying to stretch out that hamstring. Yeah. So Engel came off the field. McNeil was slow to get up on that play as well. Yeah. Those are two impact players that are off the field. If Pittsburgh's offense is going to take advantage, uh, they need to do it right now. Moraga, the tight end, into the slot at the top of your screen here. First down and 10 and pick it on the drop. Down the field, caught Turner. 30 yard line of NC State. And a first and 10 in Wolfpack territory. Now at the 27 for Pittsburgh. Kenny Pickett, another dime down the field, Roddy. And he has gotten more and more confident in this football game. It started early with his legs. This time he sits in the pocket and he gets Turner on the post route. You saw the safety, the freshman, Devon Boykin, biting on the underneath route. Turner goes over the top for a big game. Quick snap to him on first and 10. Pickett launches. Turner's wide open at the five and falls at the one, shy of the touchdown. Another big throw from Kenny Pickett, and the Maryland transfer, D.J. Turner, has come up big in the absence of Addison. And he actually had a choice whether to go to Tacey or Mech for the touchdown or D.J. Turner for the touchdown, and Turner just stumbles after catching that ball on what would have been a walk into the end zone. Which is amazing, considering the last two plays, they dropped eight guys in the coverage, only brought three. Dave Dorn said this week in his press conference, he wanted the defense to be more aggressive. Expect Tony Gibson to dial up more pressures as this game goes on. Vincent Davis lunging for his third touchdown of the year and is ruled short. So second and goal coming up. By the way, Kenny Pickett on this drive has passed John Conjimi into sixth all-time in career passing yards. And we specifically mention that because John's a buddy, right? He's a colleague. He's a great guy. He is. One and, of the and, best. And he would he was obviously rooting for that for Kenny to, sure. to pass him on that. But yeah. uh sorry, John, you're one one slot lower now. Moving you down the line, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Davis again. Pittsburgh thinks he's in. The officials spot him back. Or Daniel Carter, I beg your pardon. The 220-pound redshirt freshman. From St. Thomas Aquinas is coming to ball game, and Carter missed last week's ball game after he was injured in the Syracuse contest early. He's a little banged up on 
on that one. He well, comes off the field he's hobbling. Ankled against Syracuse, and he's hobbling back. Those big boys up front, though, for NC State, they have done such a good job of resetting the line of scrimmage on these run plays, forcing a third down. Yep. Pickett, play fake, rolls to the right. Looked at Davis. Now going to throw it away, and it'll be fourth down. Question for Pat Narduzzi is, do you go for it here? I mean, your offense is on the, the two-yard line. You force back-to-back -back three and outs. I, I think I would. Obviously, if you take the points, you're still down one. But as, as Eric said, like Pat Narduzzi wants touchdowns in these situations in the red zone. They don't get much better than this. Yep. I know he's extremely frustrated that they could not punch it in with this talented offensive line up there with Carter Warren, number 77. Expect them, if they're going to run the football, to run it over the left side of the offensive line here, but they line up in a strong side right formation. Yeah, Kerrigan, the tight end. Max, the only receiver to the left. That's Kerrigan in motion. High formation. They'll hand it to Davis, and he's not going to get in. NC State with a huge stand. It was first and goal at the one after the Turner catch. And Pittsburgh is turned away on four snaps. How big does the stumble become by DJ Turner? I mean, what a job by this NC State defense. Coming up, three big stops on the run play. They stopped the pass play as well. NC State stands and gets the ball back inside its own five. Well, Isaiah Moore wearing the number one. A big honor at NC State. And we get a procedure penalty on the Wolfpack as they start from the three because Isaiah Moore led the charge on the defense on that fourth and goal play for Pittsburgh. And they tried to score it with Vincent Davis, Roddy. Yeah, that's a heck of a list to be on uh, for, for Isaiah Moore. And Dave Doran talked about the fact that the guy just carries himself as a true leader. He talked about the respect for everyone up and down the organization. Said the cleaning ladies even comment on how respectful he is for with, to them. He's just a fantastic example. And on first and 11, essentially, maybe 12, we get a dive play. Chase Pine, the linebacker involved. Pittsburgh has run in their last three possessions. Pittsburgh has run 31 plays and kicked two field goals, Roddy. And NC State, in that same time frame, has run oh, 13, 14 plays and not scored. Come the defensive ball game. One of the things that we have not seen from NC State yet is any sprint out. This would be a good time to go to it. Larry in the gun. Going to put it up down the field in front of the state bench. It's caught. Ameka Amezi, a great catch. Another great catch by Amezi. He had one of 35 yards for a touchdown in the first half. This one in traffic at the 23. The big receivers from NC State come up again big. Look at this throw by Devin Leary. That thing, that thing is right on the sideline. Wow. Not even a chance because Amezi holds his ground into the last minute, fades away, gets a foot in bounds. It's a fantastic throw from Devin Leary. It's Rooks in motion. Here's Leary. This is Devin Carter, who catches it in midfield and is shoved out of bounds by Eric Hallett at the 43-yard line of Pittsburgh. Two big throws now against the Pitt secondary. And two great catches. Yeah, absolutely. It's been the big receivers. Amezi at 6'3", Carter at 6'4", going up against the safety Hallett, who's 5'11", who motioned for an offensive pass interference on that one. You weren't getting it on that one, big fella. So Leary with two big throws off his own end of the field, now going for the third, and that's Amezi, who got chopped down right away by Hallett, the Richard sophomore from Cypress, Texas. And Wes, to be honest with you, NC State's the first team this year that's been able to take advantage of those one-on-one -on -one matchups on the outside. Well, Tim Beck talked extensively about it in our visit with him this week, knew, knew exactly what the ammo was. Here's another throw and another catch, and that's Amezi again. At the 21 yard line, are they going to rule him out of bounds? No, I don't I don't know where that left foot came in, Wes, but I thought from up here, and, and given we are 150 yards away, but I thought he may have gotten that thing in there. Nope. Yeah, 
comes down right on the white. Yep. Nicely done by this officiating crew headed by Stuart Mullins. Four point game. All right. Eric Roddy, Devin Leary's played with a ton of poise here today. He has it. It's been amazing to me, especially on this drive, how accurate he is on those back shoulder throws and those deep balls. This is a guy who only had five spring practices and missed so much time in the preseason because of COVID. NC State, their first of the half. Wolfpack's going to take a timeout. Leary's up to 180 yards on 16 of 25 and two scores and trying to drive the pack again. Monday night, 8 o'clock, Falcons and Panthers from historic Lambeau Field. Our Falcons next on the Aaron Rodgers Revenge Tour. Oh, really? Yep. Thanks. Eric, can you believe that? <laughs> I can believe it. What a move by the Packers to just motivate Aaron Rodgers by <laughs> first round pick. Here's the third down play to hand it to Person. And right away, Pitt is there. Pittsburgh was all in the call with Sebastian Dennis. I think that's the definition of playing downhill on the other side of the line. You see Patrick Jones come through first on the right side of your screen, and Dennis comes around to the outside and seals the deal. After a really nice start to this drive for NC State, it kind of stalls out. This is still a successful drive, though. I mean, remember, they started inside their own five. Right. They were able to push that thing past midfield, and they're going to flip the field here from where this was uh, at the beginning. Now, Pittsburgh had a ton of momentum until they went the four and out around the goal line. Can they recapture it here offensively? Gill's going to punt it into the end zone. So the Panthers will bring it out. <laughs> NC State, six plays. And we've still got a four-point game here at Heinz Field. Pittsburgh from its 20 when we continue. One of our triple header on ACC Network, 4 o'clock. Chris Cotter, Mark Herzlick, and we welcome Tiffany Blackman to the ACC Network for Virginia Tech and Duke. And then ACC Primetime Football presented by Geico tonight. Clay Matvick, Tim Hasselbeck. Katie George will be at Frank Howard Field, Clemson, South Carolina for Trevor Lawrence and number one Clemson against the Virginia Cavaliers. Pitt takes over at its 20 and whoa! Isaiah Moore tracks Vincent Davis. It's like Isaiah Moore was in the pit huddle on that one. Exactly what was coming, at least that's what it looked like. And Also Pitt's, three and a half. Pitt struggles running the ball continue, but that was explosive by Isaiah Moore. It sure was. 25th career start for Isaiah Moore, who had 53 tackles this season to go for the pack. Second and 13, quick throw this time for Turner. He couldn't hang on, and it's very quickly now third and 13. And Pittsburgh's in danger of going three and out for the second time in their last three possessions. And Terrell Dawkins is shaking up on the play for the Wolf Pack. Tony Gibson's got to be very pleased with the way the defense has handled Pitt today, especially against the run. Likewise, Tim Beck's got to be happy with the way this is set up for Devin Leary in his first start of the season. Yeah, he certainly does. And, and Pitt's got this third and long. And you've mentioned a number of times, Wes, that Jordan Addison got shaken up in the first half, has not returned to the game. He's now on the sideline without pads on. He's got his mask on. There he is. Yep. There's Jordan Addison. and Fantastic freshman. Yep. Uh, he's, he's done for the rest of the day. He had the long touchdown catch early in the game and got shaken up. So Pitt's going to continue without him. One of a number of injuries we've seen in this one. Yep. I'd look for pressure from NC State's defense on this third and 13 on their last drive. They got picked apart down the field, dropping eight. I think they at least have to bring four, maybe five defenders on this play, make Kenny Pickett make a faster decision and give these defensive backs a shorter time frame to cover for. I think you're right, Eve. Pickett, straight drop, pressure, cuts it loose from Mack and cannot make the play against Shaheem Battle. Eric, you were exactly right on that one. They go with the four-man rush, played cover two man behind it. And Battle actually had a step there, but his uh, throw was just a little errant. Coming up on five to go here in the third. Gentlemen, and NC State still holding this four-point lead as Kirk Christodoulou 
set to kick it away. And he does so. Thomas will let it hit and it checks up. Shockey Jock Louis got a hand up to touch it just inside the 30, and that's where NC State will take over, and we get more Devin Leary here. And one story that has emerged this week about Pittsburgh and NC State, and there's several ties, but one that we found out here late this week regarding Tim Beck, Devin Leary, and Pat Narduzzi. Now, Devin Leary grew up in New Jersey, and he played high school ball at Timber Creek, where an older player on the team his freshman year was senior Cam Chambers, who was Michigan State's number one recruit. And Cam took an unofficial, Eric, to East Lansing, and when he did, he decided to take the freshman named Devin Leary with him in 2014, and they saw an unbelievable game. Tommy Armstrong was intercepted by Trey Wayans in the end zone for Michigan State to preserve the win. Here's Pam Knight on first down. He gets a couple. So this week, Chris Proctor, who's the QB control guy for NC State, he and Tim Beck and Devin Leary were watching film of a 2014 Michigan State-Nebraska game because Tim Beck was the offensive coordinator at Nebraska. And Devin Leary's in the room and said, oh, yeah, I was at that game. And Tim Beck goes, you were? And he said, yeah, your quarterback threw a pick in the end zone to lose it. <laughs> wow. All in part because of Cam Chambers. Ball batted in the air off the Leary throw, and it's incomplete. It's a, it's a great sort of full circle story. Oh. That was a nice play by Pitt, though. It actually ended up as best as it could for NC State because everything was covered. The, the screen on the front side, the smoke screen on the front side was covered. The slip screen on the back side was covered. And had that ball gotten off like it could have, it probably would have been picked because Pitt was all over it. Third down and nine. NC State, who was four of their first four on third down, is two of their last seven today. Larry with three to the wide, going to go that way. Amezi, who's been a target all day, got tangled up downfield with Marquez Williams incomplete. And the Wolfpack goes three and out, Roddy. Yeah, they do, and, and Leary's been so good with the back shoulder throws down the field throughout the game. That time opted to go down the field, and Williams was way over the top of that, had great position to defend that one. He gets a little word of advice from, from Tim Beck there, but this is kind of what we saw last week, too, from Pitt and Louisville. Yep. The points scored in the first half. It was a three-point game at halftime. We saw six total points in the second half. Yes, sir, like it's going to be that type of half in this one, too. And here is the punt by Gill and a fair catch call for by D.J. Turner. So, 4-10 to go in quarter three. Still a four-point game, and the serve is back now to the Panthers. Mark Whipple and Kenny Pickett, who've managed to put together 280 yards of offense, but only 37 of it on the ground. And the NC most State came in, by the way, Roddy, Dead last in the ACC and 64th nationally, allowing 231 and a half yards a game. Well, that's that's what happens when you have a 314 on the ground in, in one week, having played a couple. But the most success that, that Pitt has had today has been on these long developing routes down the field because NC State's been rushing three. Pickett looks right side, going to throw that way, and it is knocked away on a ball intended for Trey Tipton, who had his second catch of the year earlier in the ball game. And that time it was challenged by the Wolfpack again. My new favorite player on the Wolfpack defense, Malik Dunlap, making another big play at 6'4", 220. I can't get over the fact how much speed he has to play on the outside of corner and running with these pit receivers down the field. Abana Kanda in the backfield with Pickett. Kenny wants to throw, and he'll be sacked, and Drake Thomas drops it. Back around the 20-yard line, the Wolfpack has been the team sacking the quarterback today, Roddy. And we talked about all-name team earlier, Drake Thomas all-hair team in the ACC. You're going to see him come. He sees the, the running back block, gets a little hole in the offensive line. He's able to take down Kenny Pickett to create a third and really long. Yep. Third down and 16 now. Four-man rush, middle of the field, thrown beyond the reach of Tipton incomplete, and now a flag has been thrown from about 50 yards away from the line of scrimmage. 
pretty poor throw by the official, if I have to say myself. Ended up about 15 yards short, but I think you're going to get a hold on this one, Wes, in the middle. Part of the pass, holding. Number four, defense. 10 yard penalty from the previous spot and an automatic first down. Cecil Powell, the Fort Lauderdale, Florida sophomore who has made some plays today in the pass game for the Wolfpack defensively. Grab it, tipped it around the waist. You can't do that, right? Yeah, there, was a, there was a couple of times where you could have called it on that one. And he was in pretty decent position. Right. It wasn't necessary, but Powell commits the infraction on third and long. So Pittsburgh picks it up on a penalty. That's Moraga, the tight end in motion. Pickett avoiding the pressure. Steps out again, breaks through two tackles, and then knocked down at the 38. He would. You see the uh, the job there by Hargrove to push the, the defender by the quarterback? <laughs> I'm waiting to see it on the replay here. Oh, just a little bit of a nudge. Are you, talking, are you making reference to a ninja move? That, that was I a love? ninja move right there. <laughs> yeah, the, the easiest way to control a defender is by his hip, which I've made note in, in a few broadcasts. <laughs> Vincent Davis picks up the first down. It really was a nice play. I mean, Hargrove was was just slightly beat, and whoever I, I, I didn't get a number on the defender, but he had a free shot on Kenny Pickett. Hargrove just shoves his hip by. Yep. He goes flying by Pickett and able to get a nice game. First and ten for the Panthers, and now here's the throw and a great catch by Mack, and he brought it in right over the top of Peyton Wilson, the linebacker. Terrific throw by Kenny Pickett. Yeah, you talk about arm talent all the time, and people a lot of times think that means arm strength. It's the ability to manipulate the ball. Can you get the ball to your receiver over a linebacker and before defensive back? Kenny Pickett did it right there. Another first down for the Panthers, who trail four here with two minutes and change in the third. Pickett keeps on his feet, and they're going to measure him out of bounds. Back at the 37-yard line. Now Pickett standing in the end zone down to our left. Oh, we're going to get a look from the end zone. Yep. I'm, I'm standing right behind Pitt's bench, and they are not happy at all with that call. When we get to see the replay, it looks like he just stepped out of bounds, though. Right there. So, trying to get the play clock pushed back to 40 with 158 to play. Watch the left, excuse me, the right foot right there. Okay. Please reset the game clock to two minutes, five seconds. He split the white line with his left foot. On my he, was, he was close to being able to stay in on that one. I mean, it's incredible, but Kenny Pickett has been of a one-man band here almost 264 yards passing 27 yards rushing he's accounted for 291 of the 306 yards Pitt has yep three to the left and two to the right here on second and ten and Stuart Mullins timeout Time NC State, NC State. Wow. They're first of the half. Okay. This will be a third. Get time so out. each school now has, well, no, wait a second. NC State uses the timeout here with 150 to play. Wolfpack lined up the wrong way there. The wrong personnel, Roddy? It, it seemed like it. And Boy, Dave Dorn's hot. With, with all the injuries that they've had in that secondary and all the shuffling that they've had to do, can, can see why NC State would have some trouble with communication at times, but Dave Dorn not happy about having to burn his second time out of the right. second half in a four-point game, one that you know down the stretch you're going to need him. And Correct. on the second play of the game today, we got to see what happens when there's a miscommunication in the secondary. Yeah, right. So you're better safe than sorry, even though you hate to burn that second time out in a four-point game I, on the road. I think the uh, frustration for Coach is the second time out as much as it was what was going on on the field. Yeah, 100%. In a four-point game with 16 minutes to go, almost 17. Here's the second and 10. Wolfpack bringing four, pick and throwing for Turner, who makes the catch. Nope, did not hold it all the way through. 
Tanner Engel, again, you cannot say enough about his value to the football team for NC State. It's one on one coverage with DJ Turner. And Engel does a nice job of recovering. I mean, he's beat here, but does a nice job of playing through the hands of DJ Turner and forcing the ball out. That's picture perfect way to play after you get beat. Forget about the, the, the initial part of it, but the recovery is picture perfect. So now third in the full 10 for Pickett. Wolfpack brings four, Pickett loads and fires, and it's caught, Mack! Holy cow, what a grab! Tanner Engel is down on the play, and Taysir Mack got flipped over to convert the third and long. Wes, how in the world did he catch that? He how did he upside, hold on to it? He went upside down. Just think about the amount of concentration you need. Tanner Engel's right in the middle of your screen, number 10. He backpedals, and Kenny Pickett delivers this ball. Man. Here, Mack catches it, secures it, brings it into his body, does the whirling dervish, hits the ground, and is able to hold on. Shaheem Battle was also involved in it. But Taysir Mack holds on, and now Pittsburgh's got first and 10 at NC State's 24. You know, Tanner Engel, who I think maybe twisted an ankle earlier, now might have a banged up shoulder. It was hard to tell what they were tending to, but nonetheless, he's up and got his helmet and walking off the field. Yeah, he's a, he's a heartbeat guy. But on the other side, Taysier Mack, oh. when you asked Coach Narduzzi about him earlier this week, he said, look, Taysier Mack has been in the battles with us. I know that when you throw the ball to him and someone needs to come down with it, I've got confidence that Taysier Mack will come down with it. Yep. Catches like that are exactly why. And after a couple early drops in this game by Taysier Mack, which, which weren't super accurate throws, he came to the sideline right in front of me and started working with number 28 right. He had right throw him the football over and over and over. And you love to see a guy that puts in that type of work off the field get the results like that on the field. Kenny Pickett, 277 yards, now looking for the go-ahead score. Turner, the catch at the pylon, and Pittsburgh takes the lead. Kenny Pickett goes over 300 yards for the seventh time in his career on a go-ahead score to D.J. Turner. Look, if you've got any doubts about Kenny Pickett, turn on the film of this game and watch how he has kept his team in the game over and over and over. This throw is on the money, on the back shoulder of DJ Turner, who does a really nice job getting a foot down and getting into the end zone. But Kenny Pickett on that drive, extended it with his legs, made some fantastic throws, was helped with some fantastic catches, and Pitt's able to take the lead. They're gonna review the catch and score by Turner. And with Jordan Addison going out, Roddy, we we're talking before the game. Jordan Addison had two times as many catches as the next closest guy, DJ Turner. They're going to take a look to make sure this is a completed catch. And off the replays that we've seen, it's clear that he's in the end zone. Does that right foot go out, the left foot, excuse me, go out of bounds before he crosses the goal line? There's nothing definitive there, but that's going to be the question. That Remember the call goal. on the field's a score, too. Yeah, this will give us a little bit better look on whether or not that foot's out. Right's clearly in. So it's a catch. Left is right on Can the line. Can you tell? I don't, I, I don't, from what we've seen, you, there's not enough to overturn it, in my opinion. If it stands, it'll be a nine play, 73 yard drive in under three minutes. Again, I don't see how you can overturn it based on what we've seen. It's a great job of our camera crew. Absolutely. And in those multiple angles, but. It's just not the definitive look of the foot out of bounds and the ball not in the end zone, what you would need. See there, you can't, you don't have the definitive look of the foot. Our producer, Russ Winham, our director, Tim Sutton, our great ACC Network crew here. If for some reason it is ruled not a touchdown, it'll be first and goal at the one again. And after the last goal line stand by the Wolfpack, I know this pit offensive line, Mark Whipple, Pat Narduzzi, everybody's hoping that they call it a touchdown here. They just had tremendous struggles when they've gotten the red zone, and they've had two touchdowns today, both outside the red zone. And maybe that's the key. Big plays for this pit offense and not grind it out the entire drive, take shots down the field. Pat Narduzzi says it's a touchdown. He said it a couple different times. 
They have a video board, pretty extensive video board here at both ends of Hines Field. So Dave Dorn's looking at one. Coach Narduzzi stared up to the one going toward the river down to our right. And they're, they're seeing what you're seeing. This is going to be the look. Check out that left foot. I don't think you can tell. I, I don't think you can overturn it, basically. That's right. That's I, it. I, I really. Here's Stuart Mullins. After further review, the runner stepped out of bounds with the ball at the one foot line. It'll be first and goal at the one foot line. The clock is correct and we'll start on my signal. So we're going to put a little star in the scorebook around that and we're going to move on. Second time DJ Turner, by the way, has been denied his second touchdown catch of the year. Um, and <laughs> if I'm Pitt, it's, it's quarterback sneak, quarterback sneak, quarterback sneak. Don't even turn around and hand the ball off. Let Kenny Pickett finish it off for you on a sneak. But good for the referees. They got better eyesight than I do. NC State goes and gets Joshua Harris at 344 pounds and Aleem McNeil listed at 320. And they're going to play to the shoulders of Jimmy Morrissey. And there's Pickett with a flag down. Now, whether Kenny Pickett is in or not, and one official says he is in. There's been no official signal from Stuart Mullins or anyone else in this crew. Offside. Defense number 99. Penalties declined. Result of the play is a touchdown. Well, there you have it. You so Pittsburgh now does take the lead. So the Panthers take the lead on Kenny Pickett's one-yard sneak. And after being stymied at the goal line in their last trip, it's a really nice job of Pitt stringing together a drive and getting it in the end zone. Ten plays, 73 yards. 2.59 the time of the drive, and Pickett gives the Panthers the lead. Kessman bangs the point through, and it's a three-point game with a minute 11 to play here in quarter three. This is a dynamic that we have not had since that first touchdown by Jordan Addison early in the game. Kenny Pickett has engineered a few drives in the second half to get his team down close and their ability to be able to, to punch the ball in the end zone is going to be and the Pat Narduzzi is, can finally breathe a sigh of relief about. All right, so a three-point lead now for the 24th-ranked Panthers, and NC State's going to get the ball back. And tell you what, how about the Aflac trivia question today, gentlemen? Right here from Hines Field. Which NCAA school currently has the most quarterbacks on NFL rosters? I'm going to say NC State. Roddy? I'm gonna I'm gonna abstain because I not only do I know the answer I know the answer is right. <laughs> it's the this one was a layup. Well, the, the and because you guys share answers up in the press box and leave me to guess down here and make a fool of myself. Well, I I actually oh. like to see them live, but Wes said this one's a layup. I just said so it's I a layup. Looked at it. I like the question and the answer, of course. Well, do they claim Russell Wilson? See, there again, this is the question that always comes back on this. As the Wolfpack comes back out, let's give you the answer. And the answer is NC State, Russell Wilson, Eric, Phillip Rivers and Jacoby Brissett both in Indianapolis. Ryan Finley now backing up Joe Burrow in Cincinnati. And Mike Glennon, who's had a very nice career playing in Jacksonville. How about that? NC State from its 25. Three of the last five drives for the pack have been three and out. Leary trying to change that, looking near side, and Porter Rooks could not measure. Last time, well, I shouldn't say the last time, late September 2009, Carter Finley Stadium in Raleigh. Russell Wilson went 21 of 35, 322, four scores. NC State beat Pittsburgh 38 31 that day. Just glad they didn't pull out the film and play Georgia Tech in 2010. <laughs> Here's the catch by Rooks up the far side toward a first down. Up close and personal look of how good that guy was going to be. But Devin Leary has been really good today as well. He missed the corner route on that first play. That's a throw that he wants back, but a nice job getting him a third manageable. Yeah. This conversion could go so far to, to, to getting NC State back on the right side of things. They were able to string something together on the last drive. 
see where they go here. It's It's been a while since they've been able to run the ball as forcibly as they did in the first half. Pittsburgh looks like they're going to bring some heat here. Bam Knight into a stack on third and short. Nothing. The Panthers are not going to post big sack numbers today, Roddy. But here in the second half, they've been pretty stingy. They've really settled down in stopping the run. I mean, NC State had such success running the football early, and this offense is still on the field. Well, I believe they'll just take it to half and be able to think about it as uh, it is fired up. This defense has really settled down in the second half. You betcha. Third quarter is over at Heinz Field. 24th ranked Panthers back in front on Kenny Pickett's one yard plunge. Last bit. Middle of the fourth and the offense on the field here for NC State, fourth and one. Devin Leary under center and they go for it. Did we get a procedure call or was the play? With prior to the snap, timeout, pit. Wow. Their first of the half. Wow. Talked about ninja moves by offensive linemen earlier in the game. That's a, that's a ninja coach move right there. Yeah, you it was. Let him, let him snap the ball, run the quarterback sneak. You call a timeout and get it. Honestly, if I'm NC State, I mean, just run the quarterback well, sneak again. Well, Eric, you brought up an interesting point. Last time NC State had a fourth and short, right? Yeah, absolutely. This defensive line for Pitt is triggered, and they have been the entire game, but they've been triggered all year to go off of movement, and what they'll do is they'll time up motions. I saw it in the Louisville game, too, and that's how that's part of the reason why they have so many sacks. If I'm NC State, I run a hard count using motion and try to see if the D-line's trying to time that up because I've seen it on film. That's a good call there, you will. So we'll see what happens here after the Pittsburgh timeout leaves them with two. And after they seem to get that one so easy, that conversion so easy with the QB sneak, it'll be interesting to see if they leave either a gap, either gap on either side of the center open on this one, thinking maybe another QB sneak's coming. They got Tyler Bentley and Devin Danielson lined up right there kind of in the A gaps. Both A gaps covered. That's yep. what said. They're going to hand the ball to Person. He'll try to get to the outside. He's got it. He steps away from the pursuit of Phil Campbell, the linebacker, and Ricky Person at NC State pick up the first down. Uh, how about Dave Dorn going for it? And then Tim Beck opting to go to take the ball away from the line of scrimmage to hand, the, hand it to Ricky Person. Watch Paris Ford there in the middle. Another Troy Palomalu impression <laughs> jumping over. But Ricky Person makes this play just by bouncing it outside and breaking a couple of tackles. So fresh set of downs for the Wolfpack. They trail by three. We're early in period four here at Heinz Field. Leary wants to cut it loose, and he's going to be sacked, and that's Danielson breaking through. Devin Danielson gets his first sack of the year, and this is a guy that's probably the most unheralded on this defensive line. He's asked to just sit there in the middle, take on double teams. That time does a nice job an inside move and gets to Devin Leary. But uh, let's just say Randy Bates had some colorful words to describe the job of Devin Danielson on the inside of that pit defensive line. Oh, man. Leary on a play fake. Back foot throw is caught. And Emeka Amezi at the 41-yard line. That's a tough throw by Leary. It was a really tough throw. He had some pressure in his face. He would have fading away. Just is able to muscle it out to Emeka Amezi get to a third and manageable. So third and about five. And the tempo of NC State getting up to the line prevents Pitt from going to that Delta package where they're playing with three down line and keeps them in the same personnel package. Leary, pocket collapsing, he'll throw it away. <laughs> Looked like Roddy, he wanted to go wide side at the right, and then all of a sudden, that law firm in Pittsburgh was at work again, Weaver and Jones. <laughs> they are open for business on Saturdays, Wes. My goodness. Billing hours start early, too. But he had Thayer Thomas on and out to the top of the screen, and 
Pitt did a great job of covering it on the back end. That ball was supposed to come out quick. Leary did such a good job of that in the first half. Nowhere to go with the ball. Has to throw it out of bounds. After the successful fake punt by Louisville a week ago, Pat Narduzzi electing to keep his entire defensive line and linebackers on the field for this fourth down. Yeah, eight plays and a punt for the Wolfpack. Turner, who's really been a factor in the second half, as a wide receiver, is deep. And what do we get here? Delay a game? Delay of game. I can assure you. Offense. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. Was that to see if he could get Pitt to take the defense off the field? I can assure you, Pat Narduzzi will leave the defense on the field. Oh, yeah, after last because week. Because a week ago, Louisville was in a similar situation, a yep. similar part of the field, took a delay of game. Pat Narduzzi took the defense off the field, put his Rangers, his punt return team on. Right. Louisville ran the fake and got it on a big play, but the defense staying out for Pat hey, Narduzzi. Pat week. Narduzzi said he won up me. He got yeah. me. Pat Narduzzi said that wasn't happening again this week, no, too. I got I was got Good kick by Gill. Turner will signal for and make the fair catch. All right, timeout on the field. Two minutes gone. We're in the fourth at Heinz Field. The number 24 Panthers up three. Kenny Pickett was lights out on the last drive for the Pittsburgh Panthers, leading to a touchdown. And he did it through the air, mostly. A fantastic throw over a linebacker that Taysier Max able to bring in. This one, a back shoulder to DJ Turner that put him at the one-yard line. And it was only fitting that Kenny Pickett plunged in the end zone for the touchdown. He's accounted for 328 of 343 total yards for Pitt. And looking for more here. First down throw, and he'll just bail out to the bench area for A.J. Davis. The running back who's not playing today makes a pretty good catch in his sweats. Tanner Engel, absolute gamer, Roddy. He, he has battled here today. Oh, he's I mean, just he's done there and now he's going down with a cramp, it looks like, or yep, that's exactly what it is. So Tanner Engel goes down. It's a guy that, that did not play a week ago against Virginia Tech. And that Coach Dorn was so excited to have back yep. second leading tackler sort of a heartbeat of the team guy not the biggest right 188 pounds but is all over the field all right we'll take a break come back they tend to angle will continue from Pittsburgh more ACC football to come here on ACC network number at four o'clock Virginia Tech and Duke from the fabled horseshoe on the West Campus, Roddy. And then 8 o'clock ACC primetime football presented by Geico. Virginia visits number one Clemson. Tigers have won 31 straight regular season games. Curious to see if that Virginia defensive line can have any success against Clemson's offensive line. That's actually going to be a pretty good matchup, I think. Yep. Blue Devils and Hokies should be interesting too, especially after Virginia Tech made a statement last Saturday night against these Wolfpack. Here's Pickett under duress again. Hit as he throws and caught Turner. That'll put him over 100 yards. DJ Turner into NC State territory to the 37 yard line. What a factor DJ Turner's been in the second half. But come on, Kenny Pickett. I mean, Coming into this game, and I think the talk around Kenny Pickett is, is where does he rank in the ACC in terms of quarterbacks? Pat Narduzzi's not having it. It's because of plays like that. I mean, that is an off-balance throw 30 yards downfield that he puts on the money to D.J. Turner, who's able to create a big play. It, I, I have been really impressed with Kenny Pickett here today. Seventh career 300-yard game for Kenny Pickett. That's Vincent Davis on the far side. He got shoved out of bounds toward the 25. And trailing by three, NC State's defense that has dictated some of this afternoon finds itself now really battling the Panthers. Well, this, this pit offense has been much better in the second half, and Kenny Pickett's a big reason why. Mark Whipple, when we asked him about whether or not he talks to Kenny Pickett about NFL things, what he needs to work on, he said, we talked about that in the offseason. Kenny knows that he's got NFL potential, but all Kenny wants to do is get better for his team. Pickett again. Over the head of Mack, a flag is thrown in behind it. Just going to be a hold on Carter Warren. The left tackle battling with Daniel Joseph. Holding number 77, offense. 10 yard penalty, first down. It is indeed on Warren. 
Mark Whipple, the offensive coordinator with just an unbelievable resume at all levels of football, Roddy. It's a guy that's been around it Ooh. in the league. He's been around it college as well has a head guy head coach experience yeah. which sort of gives him that, that big picture perspective and when he talks about Kenny Pickett you can tell he loves to work with him and you're seeing why today Davis a couple of yards toward the 32 and second down coming up after the penalty we got a injured NC State player down it looks like it might be C.J. Clark, who played in a couple ball games last year. He is the cousin of the former Wolfpack defensive lineman B.J. Hill. B.J. Hill was a part of that defensive line where everybody got drafted. Yes, sir. Everybody. Everybody. 11.40 to go. Fourth period of play continues from Heinz Field in a moment. Three-point game. Second down, 17 for Pittsburgh. 24th-ranked team in the country, trying to go to 4-0 for the first time since 2000. Vincent Davis inside the original first down mark. And to the 24. So looking at third and eight here. If I'm not mistaken, Russ, that's the best Kenny, non-Kenny Pickett run that they've had all day. Yep. To the top of your screen, looks like you have one-on-one -on -one coverage. See if Kenny Pickett goes there. Pickett is going to throw middle of the field, offline for Mack, and it'll be incomplete. And now Alex Kessman, who's hit five in a row, three last week, after missing his first three on the season against Austin P in Syracuse. He hit three straight last week, including what ended up being the game winner. Right, Roddy? Yep. And now he's hit two this week, but relatively short, 27 and 29. This will be 42 yards for Kessman. To push the lead to six. Kick away, and it is good. So Kessman adds his third field goal of the day. And now the Pittsburgh lead is a half dozen at 23 to 17 with 10.52 to go. And, and Eric mentioned at halftime, Pat Narduzzi wanted Pitt to cut out the penalties. In large part, they have in the second half, but that drive was stalled by a holding penalty. Right. So that comes back to bite them, and they only get the three points out of it. So a seven play drive, 62 yards in two minutes and 15 seconds. Uh, you used the term settling down for the Pitt defense earlier. They have settled down in this second half. By the way, Pittsburgh, by my count, after committing, what, 10 penalties in the first half? Only one, the holding call here in the second half for Coach Narduzzi's team. There have been 19 total in the ball game. And now it's on NC State in the offense and Devin Leary, who's thrown for just under 200 yards on 18 of 31 to see if he can engineer a scoring drive. over in kick and a running catch by Ricky person or no Bam Knight excuse me number seven out of there with it across the 25 to the 27 goes Zonovan Knight and so the Wolfpack now 10:45 to go trailing a half dozen and Leary back to work for Tim Beck the offensive coordinator and, and Tim Beck was had this offense on the front foot in the first half they were aggressive in the run game and found some success, but it was really Devin Leary pushing the ball down the field that allowed them to move the ball. So the question is, how does Tim Beck get this offense back going again? They're starting out in an empty set. Something they haven't gone to in a while. Pittsburgh has scored 10 straight to take this six point lead. Leary from the pocket and a one hand catch, Devin Carter across midfield. Brought down by DeMar Hamlin. What a big time catch by Carter. It's as good a catch as you're going to see. I mean, that was a snag over the middle of the field. Spotted right at the 50. Leary to his right. Hoping somebody comes free and then throws it. And it's caught right at the first down stick. And that was Thayer Thomas. 
Devin Leary never lost his composure on that. He starts to press the line of scrimmage. The defender comes off Thayer Thomas, and he just flicks it off to him. I really like the first two plays from NC State. Yep. First and 10, Pittsburgh 40 yard line. We approach 10 minutes to play. Leary, a quick throw right side. That's Thomas again for five more. And Stuart Mullins asking for timeout, and an injured Panther is down. David Green, the big defensive tackle. And the way he went down after the play, it looks like another cramp. And I'm down here on the sideline. It is not a hot day here in Heinz Field. And a number of defenders, especially on both sides of the ball, have gone down with cramps throughout this game. It's one of those weird days. And, and maybe it maybe it has to do with the the weirdness of the season. But there's the snag by wow. Devin Carter. <laughs> it's as good a catch as you're going to see. And the two to Thayer Thomas. This is the one you're talking about where he just kind of buys his time. Yeah. and Watch him. He presses the line of scrimmage. Yeah. You have a Savassier Dennis come off Thayer Thomas, and then he's able to complete it there. And that. That's just an easy pitch and catch. It will take every time from Thayer Thomas. Yep. Devin Leary done a really nice job today, Roddy, for really NC State. Has. I think we've seen really good quarterback play on both sides for these teams. I and mean, Kenny Pickett sort of willed his team at times down the field. And, and Devin Leary putting the ball on the money, giving his receivers a chance to catch the ball downfield, which yep. sometimes ended up in catches, sometimes ended up in pass interference. And then in the second half, uh, he's largely been kept at bay, but he has played well today for sure. For sure. Yeah. Meanwhile, they tend to green here. And this might be a little bit more than a cramping issue, the way they're looking at the left leg. Well, this is one of four conference games on the card in week number four in the ACC. Of course, later this afternoon, North Carolina, number 12 in the country at Boston College, who will try to go to 3-0 for Jeff Halfley after a come-from-behind win against Texas State last Saturday night. Their last 3-0 start was Matt Ryan's senior year, Roddy. Oh, man. And I think you remember the uh, second game. Yes. Uh, yes, I do. Virginia Tech and Duke, we've already told you, is a 4 o'clock start. And then at 8 o'clock tonight, Virginia and number one, Clemson. I'm excited to see North Carolina. After three weeks. After three yeah. weeks. We're starting to doubt whether or not they were in the league still. <laughs> All right, green off the field. That's Jordan Houston checking to the boundary at the right. Oh, now Leary in trouble. And back to the line of scrimmage. He got knocked down by Kalijah Cansey. Better get ready for Kalaja Kansi, folks. He's going to be in this league a while. Yeah, he certainly will be. He's going to be really good. But uh, NC State's going to mark that formation and motion down because you got Jordan Houston lined up against a linebacker, and I thought he was just going to take off and you're going to take a shot down the field. As it stands, you've got third and four, it looks like. Well, here it is in the Wolfpack today, six of 14, two of their last ten. Leary pushing left, throws that side, and Hamlin battling Thomas threw his hands up as the ball went by. <laughs> incomplete. A flag and the there back. is a marker down on the play. Servassier Dennis lit up Devin Leary as he let go Personal of the ball. Foul. Right from the pass. Oh, wow. Number 32 defense. 15-yard penalty and an automatic first down. Drive is alive for NC State with 9.09 to go, Roddy. Penalty stops the drive on one side, extends the drive on the other. Pat Narduzzi has his arms up in the air. And, and, and honestly, I, I don't know. Uh, the, the, the hit certainly wasn't late. Sure. So the question is, is it is it targeting? It's, it's not targeting. So what what is the roughing the passer about that? I, I kind of agree with Pat Narduzzi because it seems like that was just that you hit him too hard sort of deal. It wasn't a late hit, certainly. Leary's got Houston in the backfield at Pittsburgh. Crowd in the box. Little reverse. Here's Thomas. Remember, he tried to throw it last week, and he got knocked down behind the line that time by Paris Ford. 
We asked Dave Dorn if they had trick plays dialed up for today against this great pit defense, and he said they have a bunch of them in their arsenal. Today, 0 for 2. They try the double pass early in the game, which can be tough against a man-to-man -man defense because the secondary is not necessarily going to bite on it, and it was a great job there staying at home on the reverse play by the pit defense. Yep, puts them way behind the stick, too, second and 16. with Houston in the backfield. Loops to the end zone and overthrows the intended receiver, Dylan Parham. The right idea going up the seam and cover two. Just not quite the right throw from Devin Leary. Gets you into a third and long. The Delta package is gonna come out for Pitt gonna put pressure on this NC State protection. This is Jones, Cancy, and Weaver. You know, it's been a while since we've seen Kerry Angelon get involved in the offense. He's in the slot to the bottom of the screen on the hash with a lot of room in front of him. Yep, and they need a lot of money. 16 yards to the first down stick. Leary waits, throws. Angelon wide open, touchdown, NC State. <laughs> Kerry Angeline gets his second touchdown catch of the day, and Devin Leary threw him a seed. Oh, the, the, the Red Sea parted for Kerry Angeline up the seam. It looked like they went into cover two. Nobody carries the tight end up the middle of the field, and it's an easy pitch and catch. It's a nice job of Devin Leary finding the big tight end. Watch this. You have to get a collision by number 30, Brandon George, on Angeline. Push him out to that safety. There's no redirect. There's no reroute. He goes right up the seam for a touchdown. The point after by Dunn is good. And the Wolfpack back in front by a point at 24 to 23. Third touchdown pass of the day for Devin Leary. This time, Kerry Angeline on the back end. Back to Heinz Field in a moment. Now well, Devin Leary, third touchdown pass of the day. Two of them to tight end carry Angeline. The last one was picture perfect, Roddy. It certainly was. It was. Great route, really nice play call, perfect execution. Vincent Davis to take the kick of Trenton Gill with the Wolfpack back in front now and 8.16 to play. And there will not be a return here and Pittsburgh will scrimmage from its 25. All right, let's take a look at this thing, Roddy. Well, Kerry Angelon is to the slot to the bottom of the screen. These safeties are going to split and cover two and what you'd like is a redirect from Brandon George, the outside linebacker, to push him out closer to that safety. Doesn't get that, Angeline gets a free release to the middle of that cover two zone, the weakness of that zone. It's an easy pitch and catch for Devin Leary. Yep. And a great call up here, by the way, Eric. I thought Roddy's predictability was impressive. Yeah, they're gonna start telling Tony Romo he's making a Roddy Jones type call after that one. That was phenomenal, bud. <laughs> and, and, and honestly, uh, I saw the same exact thing pre-snap. Here's Kenny Pickett fighting upfield. And he'll tuck and run. At times today, the Panthers' best runner has been their quarterback, Roddy. I'd say consistently today, it's been Kenny Pickett on the ground. That's that's been their best way to move the ball. It's certainly been done a nice job in the pass game as well. But but his ability to extend drives and to create plays with his feet is probably going to go underreported and underrated in this game. But it's it's propelled this offense. Second and short, here's Vincent Davis setting sail. He'll get toward midfield and the first down for Pittsburgh as we work toward seven and a half minutes now to play in the ball game. A one point lead for NC State. And Aline McNeil comes back into the game, big number 29 after that, after that big Pittsburgh run. And Vincent Davis must have heard us talking about Kenny Pickett being the best runner of the day because he's had a couple of nice runs here yep, in the second half. Sure has. First and 10, pick it to throw. Here comes the Wolfpack. In front of the bench and thrown away. Closest guy was tipped in and now flag.
from deep center field of this officiating crew. Palmer was the closest red helmet to Trey Tipton, the intended receiver. And this will be penalty Prior number pass. 21. Holding number three, defense. Ten-yard penalty from the previous spot and an automatic first down. It's on the redshirt sophomore, Tayon Palmer, who is from uh, Lawrenceville, Georgia. And he's plugged into this secondary today. Tyler Baker-Williams not here. Joshua Pierre-Louis was ejected for targeting back in the first half. So Palmer listed third on the depth chart at that nickel safety spot, Roddy. And that, that's what can happen when you get into a scramble drill. Those receivers try and separate and got to be disciplined as a defensive back not to grab. Here comes the blitz. They tried to get it to Davis and it's incomplete. So second and 10. They did a really nice job of setting that up. Right. You had Taysier Mack coming inside to pick the defender that was covering Vincent Davis. A couple of linemen way downfield. And it, it set up well, but the pressure got to Kenny Pickett too quick. So Turner and Tipton go to the top of your screen. They empty the backfield for Kenny Pickett with three to the field. Here's Davis, and he gets hit immediately. After the catch is made, Jakeen Harris stops Vincent Davis back at the 44. And now comes the decision for NC State. When they've sent just three, Kenny Pickett has had time to either pick them apart downfield and they've gone with zone or scramble with his feet to pick up first downs or do you blitz and take the chance with man-to-man -man on the back end of giving up a play Wolfpack bringing pressure pick it hit as he throws it's caught by Turner and he'll be nudged out of bounds I think just shy of the first down Roddy yeah, it's gonna be about two yards short it looks like and if I'm Pat Narduzzi there's no hesitation we are going for this yep and Roddy, you talked about the decision whether to bring pressure or not. They did bring pressure, but true freshman Devin Boykin, who's now in the game because of injury, did not time up that blitz well and just did not get home, allowing Kenny Pickett to make that throw. All right, they wheel the extra tackle, and then they bring Kerrigan and Zalintas into the game as well. It's about 700 pounds of man being brought onto the field for both teams. Here's Dave like Dorrance. Dorn. Yep. Last time out, Roddy, with 5.51 to go. Incredible. So we'll stay with it at Heinz Field. Timeout. NC State. NC State. Their third and final of the half. Trying to pick up their first road win timeout. over a ranked team since they beat number 11 Florida State late September 2017, 27 to 21 at Tallahassee. And when we talked to Dave Doran this week, we asked him, what's your team need to do to get this upset win on the road? And he said, we simply need to win the line of scrimmage and not turn the ball over. Well, so far, they have not turned the ball over at all. And I would say their defensive line has the edge winning the line of scrimmage. And their offensive line has held their own against probably the best defensive line in the entire country in Pittsburgh's D. Well, and... You know, you have to remind yourself at times it's still early, right, Roddy? Yeah. Even though it's October, it's still early. Yeah, you're Dave Dorn. you got to be proud of the way your football team took the early hammer and then battled back. Typically, three games into the season, you're just now getting into ACC play. Here is teams facing the biggest play since the goal line stand. Kenny Pickett trying to sneak for it. They're going to try and blow. They blow the whistle, man. Good luck sorting this out. Nice. <laughs> This is one of the hardest Here's things. Here's the first that, down call from Stuart Mullins. One of the hardest things that officials do is sort this out on the goal line. It's much harder to sort it out in the field of play, it seems like. But I mean, can you pick it with the sneak first down? So NC State's going to turn some of its defensive personnel over. Remember now, they're out of timeouts, the Wolfpack are. 5.43 to play. From outside the 30. Sixth play of the drive for Pickett and the Panthers. Looking for Davis out of the backfield. Peyton Wilson measures him up and will hold him to just a two yard game. I'm not called the name of Peyton Wilson all that much today, but he was another guy that was out last week against Virginia Tech, and Dave Doran was really excited to get him back, as was Tony Gibson. And he, he seems like 
he and Tanner Engel being back have just shored up this defense a little bit, especially in the run game with Fitz and with positions. Better football team with those guys back oh, there for sure. Vincent Davis stays in the backfield. Here's Pickett, second down and eight. Looking for the end zone. There's Turner out there, and it's broken up on the play. Well contested. Palmer, the redshirt sophomore, stayed right with D.J. Turner. Tyon Palmer doing a nice job of closing the space, getting in phase, reaching up, and batting that ball down. That's, that's coach's tape stuff right there. Yep. When they talk about knowing your technique, Eric, that's what they mean. Excellent play by him on the outside there. He t I loved how he turned his head with the receiver. When he started looking up, then he turned. It was a phenomenal job on the outside. So now third down and eight. Pickett wants to throw. Wolfpack trying to get there. Wide open Mack. Taysir max got the first down. Shy of the 15. Devin Boykin, who Roddy spoke of earlier, the young freshman in there to make the play. They turned Taysir Mack loose. Again, bringing pressure on third down. Was NC State. And Kenny Pickett maneuvers in the pocket and finds the open man. One point game. Wolfpack sees Pitt get a fresh set of downs. Flag on the play as Davis works down to about the 13 yard line. What I loved on that third down at five foot eight, 175 pounds, Vincent Davis picks up the blitzing, Peyton Wilson, and down on the day is A.J. Davis, their best pass protector in the backfield. So Vincent Davis steps up and makes the big protection to allow that throw down the field for a first down. Yep. I can tell you as a running back, that is not fun. Defense, 12 players on the field during the play. Five yard penalty from the previous spot. Repeat first down. Wow, okay. Roddy, when you were at Georgia Tech, did you guys throw the ball for you to have to pass protect? <laughs> Well, I didn't say it was often. I just said it wasn't fun. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> you, came, you came in to play under my former head coach of Buffalo, Chan Gailey, and I know you were pass protecting then. Oh, yeah. Got a little wildcat action. There. Here we go. Todd Sibley has come in to run the wildcat. Sibley on the keeper. Inside the five toward the two before, again, Peyton Wilson makes the tackle. Pitt's had some success going to that a couple of times this year. Seventh carry of the year for Sibley, who's got a touchdown, by the way. Seems almost exclusive to this now when you see him. But you had a couple of guys coming around. Jake Cradle, the right guard, getting a nice block there in the hole. And Kenny Pickett going to line up wide again, so Mark Whipple's going to wildcat this thing to the house if he can. Three and a half to go. NC State out of timeouts. Here goes Sibley. Trying to find the seam and got turned away at the goal. At five foot nine, 225 pounds, and coming into the game fresh late in the game, he is churning those legs, and he's been impressive these last couple plays. And like I said, at that stature and that weight, he is like a bowling ball coming at you. Well, they take Sibley out of the game along with Jalen Barden, who is the orbit guy in the Wildcat. And brings Zelinksis and uh, the extra tight end Kerrigan back into the game. And Pickett keeps. I think Pickett tried to squeeze and got turned back again. Remember, NC State's out of timeouts. They can't stop the clock here, Roddy, and we're going toward two and a half to go. Well, if I'm Mark Whipple, it's, it's quarterback sneak and then maybe another quarterback sneak if we don't get it on the next one after that goal line stand that NC State had earlier in the game. But Kenny Pickett now we got a little gonna little take, messed up. They're going to take a time out here. They got bailed oh, out by the resetting of the play clock. Reset the play clock again. Inside the line. So Pat Narduzzi I think is going to take a timeout. He's got two and he's going to let the clock wind all the way down under two minutes here. What a game this has been. Yeah. yeah, I think a lot of people came in and expected NC State to struggle moving the football. Right. That this would be one of those games that, that didn't matter if, if Pitt got to 28 points that, that NC State wasn't even going to be in it because this defense had been so good. But Devin Leary has been 
has done a really nice job today. This NC State offense did a nice job of getting on the front foot. Pitt's got an opportunity to take the lead. And here's the, the quick start that we saw from NC State. Devin Leary going to carry Angeline and then later to Emeka Amezi on a back shoulder. They responded on defense as well. Goal line stand to deny Pitt, but then Pitt really got it going. Kenny Pickett with a back shoulder throw to DJ Turner gets knocked out of bounds. Quarterback sneak on the last drive to take the lead. Then it was NC State right back at it. Kerry Angeline popping up once again up the seam. And that, gets, that lets you know how we got to this point. Pitt knocking on the door. Pickett who snuck from a yard out late in the third quarter. Tried to dive over the top. And NC State met him at the apex and knocked him back. Now it's called a touchdown. First surge looked like he got hit before the ball cracked the tape, Roddy. He absolutely did. I mean, Kenny Pickett tried to do the Tom Brady where you go over the top, stick the ball out potentially, but uh, when he went up, NC State went up too. Luckily for Pitt, he fell on his feet and somehow maneuvered his way into the end zone. But how tough has Kenny Pickett been today? 383 yards passing, his second touchdown on the ground, and he's had to earn them with quarterback sneaks. So Pittsburgh goes back in front with 144 to play. And, and you mentioned this just a second ago, Wes, but it's worth mentioning again. NC State has no timeouts. Right. So the fact that, that you've had to burn timeouts on a defensive play a couple of times in a special teams play, it sounds like they are going to review this. I'm, I'm not sure what you're going to be able to tell there, to be honest with you. By the way, 17 points in the last three Pittsburgh possessions, Roddy. Two touchdowns and a field goal. When it came down to it, they, they have performed. Yep. And now comes the question, I, do you go for two? Where, where in the world does he get in, though, right there? Now, now see, this is the second effort. The first one, he got denied. Well, uh, obviously, they, they saw him across the goal line. I, don't, I don't, just don't know. Yeah. You're trying to... That's why. I, that's it. Touchdown. You're right. There's the first stop. And, and if you're Pat Narduzzi, you got to go for there two here. Kenny Pickett and, and this offense are going to get the opportunity to extend this to a seven-point lead. Right. And NC State's going to have no timeouts and roughly a minute 44. Kenny Pickett has thrown 21 of 37 for 383 today. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the quick math here. You add up the uh, the 40 yards rushing to that 383. That's 423 yards of offense Kenny Pickett has accounted for today. That's Mac in motion. Pickett wants to throw. Looking for Mac. Wide open, juggled it through the end zone, knocked the back judge down. Incomplete. incomplete. And you got to credit the back judge with the pass breakup on that one, right? I think we have a top, uh, not top 10 play nominee. Tell you what, it's been a tough <laughs> afternoon for Gary Danswitz. He went down early, remember, in the first half at the other end of the field? Tasier Max, like, what do I have to do? I mean, he catches got, the ball. Oh, he's juggling it. There you go. Yeah, he got caught in the line of fire, too. That was a really nice route, though. But but now, if you're NC State, if you punch the ball in the end zone, you win the football game. So yep. it, it's right in front of you. You're going to get the ball back with a, a minute 44 left, no timeouts, and you need a touchdown to win it. These are one of those situations that you run during camp every single year. All right, what have we seen from the Wolfpack that you want to see in this drive? Now, remember, they were going east and west a lot early in the game to kind of set stuff up. They're not going to have enough time for that, are they? To be completely honest with you, I have liked when they have gone empty backfield. Okay. I've liked it because it clears things up for the offensive line. It clears up the read a little bit uh, for, for Devin Leary as well, and it makes Pitt show the hand. They're not going to be able to have right. those six guys mulling around like they typically do without tipping what the coverage is on the back end. Donovan Knight deep. The kick is short. Knight will play from the five. Knight.
right at the 20 and not much more. So here it is for NC State. Out of timeouts and 1.41 to go. Pittsburgh has one timeout remaining. The Wolfpack, who's lost five straight ACC road games, including last Saturday night at Blacksburg. Roddy, you mentioned liking the five five wide set, empty backfield. Looks like that's, or I'm sorry, the running back is in the backfield, Ricky Person. This whole drive is going to be on the offensive line for NC State. Can they hold up against these super talented defensive end pass rushers, as well as Cansey on the inside, who's been effective as well today? Yep, good point. And it looks like Pitt's going to play the Delta package here too, Eric. The three down linemen and the linebackers gapping. Yeah, they'll likely stay in this package the entire drive and watch for the picks that they'll set at the line of scrimmage. Here's Leary, quick throw. This is a Mezzi working the pit bench area and steps out of bounds. Stops the clock with 133 to play. Smart play from Mameka Amezi. Got as far as he could up the field before Pennock angled him out. A lot of times that first first down gets you the confidence that's going to propel you to make this a drive. Here's Leary against the four-man rush. Steps up, and that's Thayer Thomas, a catch in the field at the 40 and a half. And, and NC State's got to go with some urgency, but you don't have to go ultra fast here. You have time to communicate with over a minute left. Leary looks open on the seam. That's Angeline, and another great catch. This one at the Pittsburgh 38. A Panther is slow to his feet. Out in the secondary, that's Brandon Hill. And Pitt's having a tough time getting lined up. Here's Leary moving left. Has Thayer Thomas there, who straddles the sideline and makes the catch at the 32 against the objections of the Pitt coaching staff. Well, he did juggle that, but I think he juggled it while both feet were sitting in the, lay, in the field of play. Well, he got the one down, got the right one down. The question is, when did he regain control? Because he did juggle it there, weren't able to see it on replay. Here's Leary with 54 seconds left and at the pit 32. And Becca Amezi moved at the bottom of the screen against Pennock. Full nope. start, number 86, offense. Five yard penalty, second down. It's one of those that you almost get away with. I've been there before, you're like, oh <laughs> man. Almost got away with it. for the end zone. Devin Carter can't hang on over the shoulder. So now third and almost nine. I think you give Devin Leary something here where you some sort of combination that's going to give you the first down on one route and then give you a, a, a good gain that will get you out of bounds. Something going towards the sideline on another route. Got a Mezzi to the bottom of your screen. He's going to be lined up, looks like, with Jason Pinnock. 48 seconds left. Leary tried to go back across the middle for Thayer Thomas. He got batted down by Kalijah Kansi. And so now, chips go to the middle of the table on fourth and nine. Yeah, you're all in, absolutely. With it being nine yards, uh, I think if you're Pitt, you let those incredible pass rushers up front get after it. You drop everybody else. And you make it really tough for Devin Leary to find anybody. Fourth down, almost nine. Ball game on the line for the Wolfpack. Leary hits Thomas, and he steps out of bounds at the 24-yard line and a first down. Took a big lick, but held on. And now NC State still alive with 35 seconds left. How about the poise of Devin Leary on fourth down, just yep. finding the receiver and completing it, just like it was the middle of the first quarter. Pittsburgh brings four again. Leary looking for Angeline and couldn't haul it in. And there's a flag. Two flags, in fact. Stopping the clock with 29 seconds left.
Prior to the pass, holding, number six, defense. 10 yard penalty from the previous spot and an automatic first down. John Morgan, the defensive end. He may have been a little off. I think you may go with nine I there, Wes. Brandon, Brandon Hill, Hill. Yeah. exactly. Right. What's well, a six, but just an upside down nine. And if you're Pitt, you take that penalty. If it, if that's what keeps Angeline out of the end zone there, because at six foot seven, it looked like he was going to be targeted across the middle of the field and, and with a pass that he was going to be able to catch. Pitt's only got one timeout left. NC State's out of them with 29 seconds left. And Pat Narduzzi just took his last time Timeout. Pitt, their third and final of the half. This is a 30-second timeout. See Angeline six to the bottom. Well, actually, it was on. It had to be on Angeline. I think they just got it mixed up. Brandon Hill was on Thea Thomas. It looked like the, the holding call would, would have been Sebastian. on Sebastian Dennis, yeah. which on, honestly, I didn't really see a hold there. I mean, there's maybe a ticky tack pass interference somewhere in there, but I did not see a hold. I like this timeout by Pat Narduzzi. His defensive line got tired throughout that drive. The pass rush just hasn't been there these last few snaps. This gives guys like Patrick Jones, Rashad Weaver, and Canty time to catch their breath and really gear up for these next couple plays. And the other thing he would is they had a similar look to the one that, that Angeline scored on on the last drive, where he's lined up in the slot over a safety with nobody really in the middle of the field. It was he and Amezi on one side. Pat Narduzzi may have also not really liked that look right. against what NC State was lined up. Why do you see them going press man here all the way? I think you have to. I mean, that's who you are if you're Pitt. You put pressure on the def on the offensive line. You play press man. Looks like you're going to have a safety in the middle of the field, too. Angelina gets a me and a Mezzi here at the bottom. That's a back. Oh, Mezzi who makes the catch. It touchdown for NC State against Jason Pinnock. And Mecca Amezi has come up with the score with 23 seconds left. Devin Leary's fourth touchdown pass of the day. What a drive. What a job by Devin Leary. You get the early completion, then he's able to drive his team down the field, and this is an exe perfectly executed back shoulder pass. Amezi does a nice job of not pushing off, just falls away, catches the ball, is able to get his feet down, and now with the one-point lead, NC State is going to go for two. How about this? 23 seconds left. Leary throws his fourth score of the day and now looks for the two-point try. Back to Amezi. Overthrown incomplete, but the Wolfpack has the lead by a point with 23 seconds left. Devin Leary to Emeka Amezi on a 13-yard score as NC State goes 79 yards in eight plays in a minute 21. Well, how, how about NC State? This NC State offense was asleep the entire third quarter, it seemed like. Could not get anything going. But the past two drives, able to drive down for touchdowns. This one, they have no timeouts. And Devin Leary was fantastic. Converted a fourth, a fourth down, right. down the stretch. And then this is... Just the, an incredibly executed back shoulder throw to Emeka Amezi. I, I don't think you can say enough about the play of both of these quarterbacks. It's a shame that one of these teams has to lose. Wow. But the last dart so far has been thrown by Devin Leary. And I don't think you can say enough about the boost that he's given this team. Pat Narduzzi in Pittsburgh. you got to imagine that Gill wants to kick this thing through the end zone, right? Well, actually, I would I would try and keep this thing in the field of play. You, you kick it as high started. as you can, get the clock started. The less time they have, the better. They're going to hang it up, and you're right, Roddy. Here's Davis at the six. Clock starts. Davis on the run. He'll try to bounce it outside. Looking for some room, gets to the 25, and the tackle is made with about 15 seconds to go. You get almost 10 seconds taken off the clock by keeping it in the field of play. And, and, and you know, if you're Pitt, I don't know why you don't fair catch that. Let's take a look at that, another look at that touchdown pass. This is the back shoulder of Amezi who falls away from Pinnock, the defender. By the way, that's two feet. 
<laughs> so you're telling me that's good tomorrow? It's good tomorrow. Okay. Good today, and it's good tomorrow. Pittsburgh burned its last time out on the last drive where NC State was driving, so they've got to get out of bounds here. Off the 26, here's Pen Kenny Pickett loads, throws, and batted away. Wolfpack make the play with Cecil Powell, who has really played well today in the secondary. Hadn't been perfect, but he's been pretty competitive on most every throw in his neighborhood. Yeah, the, I think the, the competitiveness is what you ask for. Pitt's going to essentially have two, almost two Hail Marys. I mean, you've got to get close enough to even have a shot at a Hail Mary here soon. They're going to need about 40 yards even getting field goal range. Here's Pickett stepping up again, trying yeah, to buy some time. Last play of the game. Clock has expired. Pickett will throw across the field. Turner makes the catch. He is tackled. And NC State, with the Tanner Engel tackle, has beaten Pittsburgh. Here today at Heinz Field, the Wolfpack wins 30 to 29, Roddy. What an incredible football game. NC State just battled over and over. They, they were certainly the team that came out on the front foot for much of the game, but Pittsburgh steadied the ship. Pittsburgh did a really nice job of responding in the first half and into the second. Second became sort of a defensive battle. Pitt's offense got going, but the job that Devin Leary and Tim Beck and this offense did yep. down the stretch of finding two drives to be able to win it. The first one was the going 72 yards in seven plays, and then the second with no timeouts, getting the ball back with a minute 44, going 79 yards on eight plays for a touchdown. Devin Leary throws for four scores. He's 28 of 44 for 336 yards. NC State goes to two and one. They snap a five game ACC road losing streak. Dave Doran gets a ranked win on the road for the first time since late September of 2017. And now all of a sudden the two and one of the Wolfpack looks pretty solid. It certainly does. You look back at that Virginia Tech game as sort of an aberration. I and mean, they came out and and, and played so much better. And I think it has to do with this guy, Devin Leary taking over on offense. Yep. Has to do with Tanner Ingle, as you see him get some love from his middle linebacker. Has to do with Tanner Ingle and Peyton Wilson coming back on the other side. Great job by Dave Dorn and his crew. For Roddy Jones, Eric Wood, Wes Durham, with thanks to our producer, Russ Winham, our director, Tim Sutton. Devin Leary puts on a show here today. Two fourth quarter touchdown passes. The game winner to Emeka Amezi. From Heinz Field in Pittsburgh, West Durham, so long. Duke, Virginia Tech, next. Welcome into the huddle. And what a game we just saw. I'm your host, Jordan Cornette. We've got Emac, we've got Coach, we've got EJ. And I see the emotions from you guys in this one. First thoughts quickly, Eric, on what you saw there. Man, tremendous quarterback play from both teams, but give your tip of the cap there to Leary to be able to march down the field uh, to win the game for his team. That was absolutely tremendous. Great play calling all day long, uh, and the defense did enough to win the game. So I was very impressed with NC State all day today. Emac, you hit on those quarterbacks. I mean, a minute 41 seconds in the fourth quarter uh, against an undefeated team on the road. Uh, obviously, there's no crowd noise, but that's exactly how you draw it up as a coach on a Thursday practice when those guys are trying to, you know, get toward the end of the week, preparing for a Saturday game. Great job to Devin Leary. He was solid all night. He had ice water in his veins. He never looked like he was uh, flinching or anything like that. And those back sort of throws to Mecca and Mizi were, you know, simply beautiful. Just, you know, I hadn't seen him do that all year in his career. So excellent to see him grow like that. We kept talking about defensive linemen, defensive linemen. Guess what? The offensive line kicked butt, to, kicked butt today, giving great protection to Kenny Pickett all day. He was ripping, tearing them apart, standing there firm in the pocket. And before, you know, right when the game counted the most, Leary's able to stand in there and throw strikes. And uh, I don't, I don't know if they, the D line even sniffed him one time on that last drive, maybe once. But uh, my hats off to both offensive lines in this ball game. Yeah, you got to put in a, a lot of work to keep that pit defensive line from coming after you. The Wolfpack's offensive Amen. line up for the challenge today. Let's take a look at this highlight. What a game it was. Kenny Pickett and his ranked pit team looking to go 4-0 for the first time in 20 years, and it's early. 
Panthers strike. Where is the defense? Broken coverage. Jordan Addison. Pitt leads early 7-0. Early second quarter. The Wolfpack with the lead. Devin the dude Leary drops back and throws an absolute dime. Emeka Amezi for the touchdown. The pack on top, 17-7. Closing minutes of the third, same score. Kenny Pickett, these quarterbacks put on a flat-out show. To see her Mack with an incredible catch, Pitt moving the chains. Next play, Pickett again from the shotgun. Finds DJ Tucker along the sidelines for a big game. Much delibera- deliberation, not ruled a touchdown. But Pickett would keep it in score on a few plays later. Pitt on top, 2017. Midway through the fourth, Pitt with the lead. Leary to carry Angeline across the middle. NC State back on top. And at this point, you figured Pitt was going to handle business, hold serve at home with Pickett and the keeper to take the lead. Another look at this one. Too close to call. I don't know where they saw touchdown, but it's what it was called. And it's Pitt back on top. Game over, right? Game is not over. The Wolfpack, Devin the Dude, Leary had one more in the chamber. Emeka, Amezi, <laughs> and the Pack get it done. I love it. Eric Wood with Coach Dorn on a win. Coach, talk to me about that game winning drive, the execution of your guys in the fourth quarter. <laughs> God is good, man. We give them all the glory. So proud of our players. Uh, Devin Leary, what he did in that drive. Emeka to make some plays like he did. The O-line, it's a really good pit team. Our guys rose up amongst a lot of stuff people don't even know about, you know, that's going on in this COVID era. And so proud of our football team and our coaching staff. You told us this week to win this game on the road, you got to not turn the ball over. You didn't do that. And you had to win the line of scrimmage. You faced tough lines on both sides of the ball. I thought your boys played great today. I appreciate that. Really proud of this group. That is a hell of a win. Look forward to coming home, going back to Raleigh. Go Pack. Congrats, Coach. Heck of a lot to be proud of, Coach Dorn. Pat Narduzzi and the Panthers trying to stay perfect this season. Up 29-24 late. First and goal, Devin Leary finds Emeka Amezi for the touchdown. So good we had to see it again. Amezi both feet down. NC State wins. West Durham, Roddy Jones with more. Well, 30 to 29 here at Heinz Field today as NC State beats number 24 Pittsburgh. Roddy, some kind of ball game, huh? It was a fantastic game. It was almost three games in one because NC State dominated early, then Pitt came back, then the third quarter happened, which was a little weird. Uh, it seemed like the scoring stopped, but both offenses got going in the fourth, shot for shot, and it ends up NC State came out with a knockout blow. Devin Leary gets the start today for the Wolfpack. He responds, four touchdown passes. Two big ones in the final period. He was he was fantastic when it came down to it. And on that last drive, the fourth down conversion, the right. poise, the great back shoulder throw to Emeka Amezi, I was really impressed with Devin Leary in his first start. Remember, he missed a lot of time during camp, was a little rusty, didn't look like it today. The Wolfpack also did a nice job neutralizing Pitt's very dangerous defense. They did, and the Pitt was not able to get to the quarterback consistently. They did a nice job getting the ball out of Devin Leary's hands early, and then that offensive line late in the game really neutralized as you said Rashad Weaver Patrick Jones you have to really commend this entire team Wolfpack goes to two and one by the way in the ACC with the win over Wake Forest the loss last Saturday at Virginia Tech they're at Virginia next week Pittsburgh travels to Boston College after four straight home games to start the season yeah, and Pitt's on the road for much of the rest of the year only two coming up and that Boston College team is a really good football team Pitt's going to look to rebound but this is really a win that NC State can build off of so you have to commend Dave Dorn and his crew Wolfpack gets a rank road win for the first time since 2017 when they beat Florida State and they win here today at Heinz Field.